one that what that image you showed of like the weird head on top of that was crazy. It was like melted it, or it maybe it. it looked defaced, but was it defaced? It almost looked like some of those stones you see around the dolmens where they're like they have cut or it looked like it. Groot or something like a weird. Yeah, it was a weird squid man. Weird. And, um, yeah. and what's worse, it was in a Roman centurion kind of uh, armor without oh any God. arms. You know, like yeah. you'd have the the kind of the the levery things coming down the sides of the armor, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but it had no arms sticking out of it. So, um, yeah, we uh, we went to Westminster Abbey recently because I've been looking at all the graveyards. Mm -hmm. So when you go through the British countryside, the English countryside, you see all these churches. Every every three square miles, there's a church, almost like a grid. And wherever you are, if you're cycling around the fields, wherever you look, you'd always see a steeple of a church somewhere. And um, so you go into the graveyards and obviously, as we said and discussed before, there's not many graves before 1740. Mm -hmm. So I went to Westminster Abbey on the, assuming that you would see hundreds of graves of, of people that have died in the past. And it, it takes this history back through to, I think Henry III, he's built in, he's buried in Westminster Abbey. But it's not really what you see at all. The minute you walk in there, it's this grotesque display of lords and controllers and sirs, knights, whatever you want to call them, really start at about 1730. Hmm. Um, and all of the old, the old stuff, the old kind of the historical, like Henry, Henry III, et cetera, for example, um, they're just almost in a corner and you can't even see them but isn't elizabeth buried there in West well this is the this is the bizarre thing because as you're walking around you see these these like statues of <clears throat> you know the, these nobles that are all full of self-importance and and pomp and they're all all of the dating is is marked as j seven seven something so 17 1720, 1750, 1730. But it's all written on the same kind of marble stone, uh, written in the same ink, chiseled at the same time. And that goes all the way from sort of early 1700s right through to probably like mid 1800s. And then before that, everything else is just like literally pushed to one side. And you have to go around all of the abbey um, and actually go looking for these, these British kings and queens um where you know you 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 enter into Westminster Abbey thinking that they would be front and center and it's not and what you what you've got front and center is these controllers um these elites and you know there's a lot of pictures that um that we've got and it will show you what i mean in in, in these images and if you look through the images uh you can see that it all sort of starts. Whatever's happened in there is a reef, is, is, a, is a makeover. And that makeover starts about 1700. Um, and of course, that makeover is consistent with some of the other stuff that I've been looking at with missing graves, missing bodies. Um, so something is just way off. It's, I thought you would see a layers and layers of either real or fake history, whatever your, depending on what your viewpoint is on that. But there isn't even that. There's not even an attempt to to put an old history in there that's half compelling. It is all 1700, and you can and you can imagine the conversations that these lords and peers would have had to get themselves in there. You know, they you you get the impression they would have all been scrambling over their over each other to to have a you know a marble statue of them put in the abbey, and it's. It kind of feels like some crazy clothes shop that's closed down and they've pushed all the mannequins to the front of the store. Hmm. It's I mean, really remember, bizarre. Aren't there some famous people buried in there too? Um, like a lot of really famous. Well, it says this free over if you look on Wikipedia, it'll tell you, you know, what the what the script is there. And it says there's over three thousand three hundred people buried in there and you know, their names are mentioned in there, et cetera, et cetera. But they the you know the obvious thing and when you walk into that building um in the reception area it's just left wall to wall marble stack marble statues of all these people um all in tights all in robes with you know kind of 
diamond encrusted ruby walking sticks showing how important they are with a pipe and a smoking jacket and uh, and, it, and it just doesn't look right it, it's it's grotesque it's a grotesque display of the elites and you know and you, and you get an idea of the kind of conversations that would have been going on behind closed doors to get themselves into these into the into this sort of situation in in the abbey so yeah, it's, it's kind of left me left me feeling quite sick, really, when you go in there, because you you walk around Britain at large and you start looking at your your architecture, mm-hmm. and you you visit other countries like Barcelona, and you go to the Sagrada Familia, which was which was built in the you know I think it's um, Gaudi is like the Gaudi, architect yeah. for that yeah that was started in circa eighteen eighty five and they're still building that cathedral now. And when you compare that cathedral to, say, Canterbury Cathedral, um, you, you see that Canterbury Cathedral is a higher quality build than the Sagrada Familia. But you look at Wikipedia, and Wikipedia tells you that Canterbury Cathedral was literally rebuilt from the ground yeah, up. it was burnt and then rebuilt. In, in, a, in, I think it's 1070, and it was finished in 1077. Okay, so when I went to Canterbury Cathedral, I remember there was so i maybe maybe i have this wrong but because i was like very young when i went there like 23 or something but i think i remember it was like the oldest the oldest monarch was buried there was supposedly like richard the first or something and it was like 1180 or something and i remember at the time thinking that's not even that old like no no the, the original the original build was built in 580 and then it was completely rebuilt in, in 10. Uh, it's either 10 or 11 70 and then in in uh seven years later it's finished now you you compare the quality of the building yeah. it's better than Sagada Familia, and the Sagada Familia has taken 120 130 years to build that you know we're in what uh 2022 now and they started that in 1880 1890 and they still haven't finished it so other anomalies you see with the cathedrals are um the Notre Dame de Paris where they've burnt that's had a fire and they're reburnt rebuilding that um and the 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 stories you're seeing on on the re- on the repair work it's going to take 15 years just to build the roof so in you know, over a thousand years ago we could build a whole cathedral in seven years um and in 2022 it's going to take us 15 years to rebuild a roof so clearly the mainstream narrative is is way 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 off on this stuff yeah well i mean even even just like um uh like i think we talked about this last time and it, i don't know i just saw some picture of a tomb in turkey yesterday that they, they mm. have they have ionic columns right the ionic and doric and corinthian columns are everywhere everywhere mm. and they're mm. I, yeah that's an ionic right there they're, they're identical like um so it's almost like you would they're almost like molded or a stamp and you know how hard that would be to do with a chisel and a hammer if you think about how i mean it's an architectural element that no one really pays attention to because it's just like super pervasive and you don't think about it but really that's quite an elaborate amazing thing that they made Mm -hmm. uniform everywhere and some of my favorite go to argentina or chile they're they have have tons of them yeah, and some of my favorite ones are the ones that are spirally fluted. Like they've fluted them, but they've spiraled around. Around the whole, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. How do they do that? And they're and they're you know perfectly like like a like a drill bit or something. They're perfect. But even well, the other issues, how did they? Even if you had a drill bit, even today we don't make those today because it's not oh. easy to do. Like it's almost like they're molds or something. Yeah. Or, or however they were made, like 3D printed and all these other ideas that they're throwing out, you know, it's advanced. That's what we can all agree upon is something yes. advanced created all this stuff that is not, is beyond or outside of our capabilities. Well, yes. the other thing, of course, is that how, you, how do you communicate that from location to location? So, Good point. you know, behind you that. now, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you've got one of those columns behind you, right? Mm-hmm. So if we, yeah. if we didn't have uh, like this, this platform that we're using now, which is, which is Zoom, and the images that go with it, the internet, smartphones, picture messages, WhatsApp, etc. How would you describe this stuff um, from country to country all over the world? Yeah. Um, when the only way, the only comms you've got are sketches. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
so so you would basically need to visit the forum in rome you would need to sit there and sketch out brick for brick one of these one of these sites maybe take all of the technical drawings all the design work which we haven't seen any of that in our you know recording of that history there are no um there are no emoji you know there's not a lot of technical drawings and plan work for this stuff no especially the the oldest stuff no they don't even show how do you communicate that right yeah that's the hardest part is we said this with uh, nikki in the last one it was if if you're not there yourself you have to trust these these uh billionaire antiquarians that were able to afford to go to these places and maybe they hired someone to go with them that was a professional artist Mm -hmm. and then you know of course it, what were they what were they going off of were they trying to just get a paycheck or were they really trying to uh you know do do something towards science and, and really accurately depict what they saw and I, a lot of times we see these illustrations that are way off they don't depict the the, the right features they don't even depict the damage of the ruins when we we can see for our, in our own eyes we see the damage like with the holes in the coliseum we those those are devoid of you know in a lot of the illustrations and like the uh, what is it the temple of antoninus Right, the yeah. one that we like with all the holes yeah. in the foundation. If you didn't, I mean, no one, no one told us about that. We didn't see that until we saw those tourist photos where someone had decided to, you know, go off to the side a little bit and take a side photo. Yeah. The the, yeah. the nice pretty photos you see is always from the front. You never see any of that evidence. Yeah, and I think I think you know we can edit some pictures into this chat as well and 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 run through what we're seeing here. But on that on that temple. Um, when you look at the door on the entrance of the temple, that's 20, 22 foot high. Yeah. And when, when you look down the outside wall of that temple, there's a rows of holes all the way through. Now they, mm-hmm. they start from the ground and they go to the very top of the building. Pretty much on the sides. Yeah. Pretty you much on the side. Now, if you, if, you, if you look at the mainstream theory, they were either all made before it was, it was buried or all made after it was buried mm. but there's, there's they don't look like they're getting anything out of the building but yet the, the holes go all the way up to the top so by the by their depth you say you say maybe that by the depth of these holes it doesn't look like there there's there's anything in there to be gotten out no what like no. iron or something no. you mean i i, no. I kind of propose this as well in my damage holes video it's like some of this stuff especially the what was that pergamon pergamon the whole side of that theater it, like you said goes from the ground all the way up and I, I'm, I wasn't sure by the profile of the holes and the distribution that they were actually able to get anything out of the walls or if this is some other kind of damage. That's why I just kind of kept it open as damage holes. Well, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to go to some of these sites and in, in Rome, you could barely fit your fist into the holes. Oh, on so those are very shallow. So they're yeah. really shallow. So we expect a clamp to be in the middle, right? Across the yeah. joinery in the middle right, of- Right, for structural yeah. support. No, they don't right. Have... And right. of course, they've then built on top of that yeah so if there was a functional need for the clamps in the first place yeah. um the fact that they're built on top of these buildings with the holes still there and the clamps no longer in place suggests uh, yeah. that there wasn't a functional need for the clamps anyway because the buildings would have would have clapped yeah would have collapsed either way Good point. so they seem to be functioning very well without the clamps which suggests yeah. that yeah. maybe they didn't need the clamps in the first place passar gade and iran is a very big you know plat there's a platform there it's like a, a sand colored stone. It's the bevel blocks, just, mm. the, just the, the stump, the platform or whatever it is left. And it's riddled with the holes and it's holding mm. together just fine. You know, the, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and the other thing you see in London as well is in Horse Guards Parade, you see um, fake bevel blocks. That's right. Um, we, oh yeah, you see that we're, we're, badly they're, done like, bevel blocks so badly done that it looked like they're intentionally bad so done. they're they're called like when it gets to neoclassicism and architecture they call them uh rustification right right yeah yeah right. we call them legacy bevel blocks where, where it's an obvious later interpretation of the originals yeah. whatever whenever this was and, and going back to to rome as well the the holes on the side of that building are very mysterious because you go to uh, the National Portrait Gallery in London, and in the same locations, you see the same um, corner blocks in every block. So there's yeah. there's mirrored corner blocks butting up against each other all the way through the um, the National Portrait Gallery in Trafalgar Square. But they 
One, the front of that building looks exactly the same as the as the temple in right in um, in the forum that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and two, the the blocks look exactly the same. The difference is the ones in Rome look like they've been blown from the inside out. They don't look like they've been chiselled away. They look like they've ex exploded. Good. Good. Um, and the the blocks in in London don't look like that. Now, of course, the other thing is, why would you, you know, at, at what we're saying about this this temple in, in Rome is is only you know the mainstream narrative is they've they've chipped out these um, iron, you know, metal supports, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. There's no need to recreate those squares in London if you didn't suspect something was going on where they they were blocking these things in so when you see a, a, a video and some of the pictures i've got of my trip to london and you compare that to the two buildings they are remarkably similar right one just looks pre-damaged and then one is yeah. post -damaged. however it's they look like the same building apart from one's blowing up and all these blocks have exploded and the yeah. other one hasn't yeah, yeah and yeah. because one has exploded it's therefore it's roman because one hasn't exploded it's therefore uh recent and it's victorian yeah, there's a big um, chunk of rock in Trajan's Market that's riddled with the same holes. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's there's lots of sites that that echo these damage holes, and it's and if it is the the same evidence everywhere, it's more indicative to maybe the uh, the construction or demolition of the site, mm -hmm. and, and maybe less less toward the uh, some kind of random scavenging of, of primitive peoples later. And remember as well, we also see these corner blocks still in place in the ancient stuff as well. Mm -hmm. you know right. uh, quite a lot of the sites um show the the intact corner blocks that's right so yeah. one of the arguments is why well, they chipped off the corner when they were positioning the block um but you know when you're when you're building a national portrait gallery in 1880 1890 in central london mm -hmm. um you can't tell me that every corner block was 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 chipped off right. and in some and cases they're not corner blocks as well they're they're uh yeah. Uh, uh, like a rendering with it etched into it yeah right yeah but you know here's the other thing that no one really talks about a lot if you're doing it in 1880 you still don't have electricity and you still don't you still are only ho horse and cart you still don't sure. have any kind of mm -hmm. machinery like mm -hmm. it doesn't make it any less impressive that it, it's a it's it's i i also find that kind of weird that we just sort of gloss over that yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. those pillar stones, right? Now, we have those on the Ahu at Easter Island. Those those corner, we're going to make a video on those eventually. That, that kind of deserves its own special video. But they're corner filler stones. They're, they're like you said, they, they could have been made by chipping the corner of a block and then you carved it back and made an inset block for it. But some of these look inten uh, intentional. They look like it was part of the design, maybe a feature like, like the Cori Concha one, right? That tiny little one. You can't tell me that was just because they chipped the corner. They didn't chip any of the other corners. That was a, like a little triangle one. It's like a little trapezoidal, tiny little baby one. And it's like that was deliberately put there. Brian Forrester shows it and a few others as well. But it's it yeah. was it, it's it's a design feature, a marker. It was in whatever way it's deliberate. And and yeah. the, these were these weren't just careless, you know, quick. Yeah, and I think these are important hallmarks to understand that. And, and and what's important about these is you see them all the way through Greco-Roman style buildings, but then you see them appearing on identical looking buildings through Victorian London and yes. other places in the world. It's not just Victorian London. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the going back to the original point about uh, communications and how do you describe this stuff? What mm -hmm. is one thing to just say, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll return from my journeys across the land and, you know, I'll report back to the noble people. These are the type of buildings they built. And these are the type of buildings we should build um, mirroring those buildings. But then when you get into the microscopic details, um, those corner blocks, most people are completely oblivious to them. When they visit London, they look at these, these buildings. Mm -hmm. So the artists would have had to, had to record the, you know, the smallest of detail to replicate that all over the world. And they would have had to have done it all at the same time. Same with the nubs, right? You, it's a yeah. small detail, and a lot of artists and illustrators yeah. did not include the nubs. Yeah, yeah. And this is the uh, this is the issue with what throws a massive question over history, isn't it? As we are led to believe history is. Yeah. 
that some of these sites um, are largely destroyed and many of the sites show evidence of high technology being used to drill holes, cut blocks. You know, there's, there's so much evidence of high tech yeah. tooling in Egypt and in yeah. Peru as well. Turkey. But you, you, you then look at the destruction, you say, well, the destruction is equally impressive really? because the destruction shows evidence of high tech weaponry or tooling yeah or methodology to destroy yeah. the buildings. If, if you can have an advanced tool to build the building, you can use an advanced tool to destroy the building. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, speaking that, of destruction, and... I, I've kind of started thinking about, like, I, I almost feel like they must have had like direct energy weapons or something, because if you think about, uh, okay, I don't know, I, I, I was listening to some video last night about how like, oh, the Younger Dryas impact would have had to have been on par with like a, a, a thousand right. nuclear weapons or something like right. that but right. okay if you even that doesn't make sense because so you're telling me a rock with no nuclear explosions in it just comes in hits and then cr just from impact causes that i don't well, actually buy that from for a lot of like like i don't think that i think that if something were to be that explosive, it would have had to have had explosions in it. Because if it's literally space ice or literally space rock, it's, I don't think it's going to do as much damage as they're projecting that it does. And mm. it, I don't know, like maybe like what, what's the, do we have comets that have hit in the last, like in our lifetime? Because it feels like you have a, a the Tunguska airburst and it's like, yeah, I but think, it doesn't leave an impact crater, really. Uh, I mean, nothing nothing on that scale. But it, then again, it's like, with the stuff we talk about, I, I think there's a big confusion right now between what's natural and what's artificial. You know, wh uh, what, as what aspect of the cataclysms are natural and what aspect are, are artificial? Same with the destruction of these sites, right? You know, it, how many of these sites have we been told that that was, you know, uh, uh, well, recently even, like the Jericho uh debate about how it was destroyed or the tannis saw... or the elephantine island where it looks literally looks sure. like melted rock sure right so so it's like you know there's there's debate going on right now over how like the circumstances of how these places were destroyed and it's like we shouldn't rule out this this artificial advanced destruction however it was done either either they destroyed their own sites to make it look artificial and old or i mean look look uh, ancient and, and and authentic to kind of sell the narrative of mm -hmm everything's been here a while or did they get interrupted by some other group or sabotage mutiny something and all of their sites were destroyed through their like their weapons were used against them mm -hmm. you know, and there's like this three important points i've been looking at your last chat actually right one uh point one was that the the doorways and the, and the the structure of the buildings in peru are specifically designed to make them earthquake proof yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Now, as we all know, earthquakes are fairly rare. So True. how do you how do you check test that methodology? So exactly. do we do build you... a structure today and then we say, OK, OK, guys, what we're going to do, we've built this structure today. Um, let's just wait until there's an earthquake. Right. Yeah. No, and then have, on the day of the earthquake, this. make sure you're there. Make sure you're there because we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to interrupt. Pay attention. Oh, yeah. so, so ready? Three, three, two, one, go. Right. And, you know, and they're sitting there five years later and, and it's like, has anyone noticed anything yet? Like, no, we haven't had an earthquake. So, like, okay, great. I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee. They go and get a cup of coffee. They come back. And it's like, fuck, we missed it. Just had the earthquake. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, joking aside, the point is, it's highly unlikely that you yes. would be able to develop earthquake proof buildings without running computer simulations of earthquakes. Yeah, yeah. Which they yeah. clearly didn't have when I mean, they were carving this out of stone. Yeah. yeah. Guys so devoting their whole lives to this. It's this a case of, right, chip it away, build it, and let's wait and see. And then when it all falls down, we'll do a different strategy. So right. if that was the case, where are all of the the, the attempts to get it right before the earthquakes yeah. happen? Where's all the prototyping? Agreed. Absolutely agree. Absolutely. Where, where is that process of development? Right. So that is point one. Yeah. yeah, that was point one. Point two was the, uh, you mentioned the indigenous people didn't have any knowledge of the prototyping and the methodology that took them to this, this stake. Well, 
that would be the case if it simply wasn't anything to do with these guys. If someone else manufactured this maybe recently, the ancients wouldn't know anything about it. Right. If the ancient people weren't ancient at all, and they were people just like us that would witness a planet-wide genocide and were forced to live off the land and become hunter-gatherers, they could only be maybe 100 years old, 200, 300 years old. Yeah. And I think in some of these cases, what, what you've got to do is look at uh, the modus operandi of the colonization of these countries against the indigenous people and ask who those indigenous people really were. Right. Um, if those indigenous people were the survivors of a pre 1700s planet wide genocide, then it would make complete sense to go and colonize those countries and kill all the survivors. The loose stragglers, La right? the, add the... layers of artificial history, push back the survivors' knowledge of a cataclysm, yeah. push that back into the distant past. Because mm -hmm. if that is what's happened, we're not meant to know about this cataclysm. And point number three was that you um, know in your last talk um, some houses, and there's some housey house type structures that have got a roof on it. And down yeah. the down the edge of the triangular shaped top section of of the the roof, you can see the indents where they were put a beam, and then yeah. another indent yeah, where you I put think. another beam. Peru. In Peru, you see the same building without any indents at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you if you go back to our analogy of a of a shipwreck in a fish tank, if yeah. you actually go looking for a shipwreck, you're going to find the cargo. You're going to find cannonballs you're going to find small details like the eyelets that would bind the ropes to the side of the boat and deal with yeah. the the sails etc now yeah. when you go looking at the uh the the galleon in the bottom of the fish tank none of that will be there it will just be a rudimentary representation of a galleon without without the cargo without the bones without the eyelets without the small tacks and nails that are holding it all together make it functional because it, it wouldn't be functional yeah be a representation and right. this is what you see in a lot of the ruins they look mm. ruined but then when you actually say well let's have a look at this this um this roof structure in peru how would you hold the roof on right well, it's all, well there's no methodology there for holding the roof on which mm. suggests that maybe it's designed to look like a ruined house and that's yeah. why a lot of these design elements are missing because it was never ever a ruined house it's just a, a model, an approximation. Not right? ruined house, yeah. Not, not all, every single functioning detail is there on like a Lego car, you know? It's, okay, it's... but if if that were the case and it's like the, this this was like fish tank or ornamentation or whatever uh, to try to build a fake history, um, mm. w like why go to that, I, I guess like, I guess why go to the detail of that? Like why well, go- Well, my, my view, my view is that these these, you know, supposed resets are, are i don't think there is resets i think i think we're we're in a situation where there's the it seems likely that there's maybe a planet-wide genocide and a reintroduction and repopulation of what we call humans now that that's where I, the conclusion i have come to um and why do i say that in, in england where i live particularly is on a roman road it goes between uh, cambridge and london so this is a road that um, traveled through all these fields, traveled through forests and people like Samuel Pepys and lots of, you know, other noble people have traveled up and down this road into London. All the way along the road, there's, you look at the trees um, and most of the trees are missing. It's just fields, fields and fields and fields. And none of the trees are really any more than 300 years old. And you can test that because there are areas where trees have been cut down and you can count the rings and there's, you know they only go back two or three hundred years i do a lot of cycling do a lot of mountain biking um and i ride along um an area of woods that is part of the roman road and all the, the trees in there are no more than two or three hundred years old the only exception to the tree issue is when you go to a large stately home and you see big oak trees that are maybe a, you know four five six seven hundred years old so the issue is where did trees go so Archaeology and history deals with that. And they, they answer the question by saying, well, there was a mass deforestization. You know, we were, we were deforestizing the area and making it into agricultural area. 
So what that means is that the people who were doing that dug up the forests, roots and branches. Yeah, so every, so every field had a forest dug up by the roots. Would have had to, and cleared of rocks and every other. Cleared thing. of rocks, everything, right? Mm -hmm. So evidently, if that was happening between 1500 and say 1750, then there would be an abundance of people, huge amounts of people. Now, remember, when we, when we look around the graveyards, we, we don't see any graves, those people. And of course, there's an answer for that, because at that point in time, we wasn't really celebrating death. Um, but yet, when you go to those villages in the middle of every village is there's, well, we want to say at the middle of a village, it is typically a flint clad church with three or four Victorian buildings around it. In each church, you'll see a grave dated to 1730 to 1760. And then nothing until we get to 1810. So whenever you do find a grave, it will be mid, mid to early side of 1700s. And then there's nothing um, until the 1800s. So it, it looks very much like people have seeded an area. Yeah. yeah. And then a generation well, or two afterwards, they're off screen. Place. Of died, yeah. So, if you was given uh, a group of orphans, and you was, you know, in, you was 30. what 20, 30, you die at 80, 90, maybe, um, and then those orphans start dying. You know that there's a gap of 40 odd years, which you can't yeah. explain naturally. So that that's one observation, and this is this is this is what I'm doing in terms of going and visiting these sites and observing what you see what you don't see is anything that you'd expect to see you would expect to see areas where you can find these ancient graves from the people after sure. all when you cycle along this road or you drive along this road bearing in mind it's an old ancient roman road and there's taverns and inns and coach houses all the way along it and they're all dated 1400 1500 1600 then rebuilt circa 1720, 1740, rebuilt 17, 18, you know, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. you, you start saying, well, there are clearly people around that built all this stuff. And if we can engrave a build date on a building, or we can build, say, for example, a cathedral in 1070 um, that we can't build now, um, or if we can build, it takes, or an attempt to build that takes 100 years. Clearly, those people were able to knock up a headstone yeah. you know right. clearly they were able to deforestize huge areas of land acres and acres and acres of land yeah were dug up removed burnt repurposed changed into coaches or scaffold whatever it was but yet there's not a single trace of the people that done it so what do you think they're like they're like a slave race at that time and I mean, no, like what do you think no, about the, no i, I, I think, think they were there I think we're looking them. at some kind of large event that, that basically killed a foot, um, blew away the trees. Mm. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I don't think the, wonder, yeah. is there is there Doggerland influences here? Like, is the story of Doggerland tied into this and flood stories and like how 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 is this regional to uh, to England? Maybe is this like a micro? No, no, because there are other there are other elements, aren't there? Right. So you walk around the English countryside and you say, well, okay, I visited, you know, lots of churches and it's the same pattern. There's a pattern forming all over the country. Yeah. And yes, there are like cribs and tombs of people that are older, but they're typically nobles. So not only are you in a situation where you can't find the graves in the UK. And when I say graves, I mean, on the ground, you know, boots on the ground, you know, go in, go looking for it yourself, try and find these graves. You can't find them. And if you do find some kind of remnant of a medieval grave, it's a, it's a handful of people, but you know, we are talking about a situation where thousands and thousands of people deforestized the whole country, removed all the forests across the whole country. So you then look further afield and you say, well, okay, how does this look in England? Um, you know, across the whole country, it's, it's very similar. And you're like, well, how does it look elsewhere? Let's have a look at Canada. Well, we go to Canada, you go to America. There are no graves pre sort of 1780s then because that's when we colonised the country. Well, hang on, there's no graves in England and we're the people exporting the humans to those. those. So not only did we have 
we've got no graves. We've also got a surplus amount of people because we're exporting all those people. Oh, so point. where are their parents? Well, they? they were orphans. Okay, well, a lot of these people were orphans and criminals. Like, where are their parents? Well, they, they didn't want to be known. And and then you you look at uh, the Netherlands in like the 1680s. Apparently, Britain colonised most of the Netherlands. And then you look at South Africa and other countries, and you know you start looking at deserts as well. When did when were they created, and what happened there, and what's the explanation there? And then you look at New Zealand, and obviously there's no graves there because we didn't colonise that until the late 1700s. And then you look at Australia and say, well, there are no graves there because we didn't colonise that until the late 1700s so you're seeing a pattern forming that you walk around the countryside and you can't find graves in britain you don't expect to find graves in canada or america you don't expect to find graves in australia and new zealand so if you take away britain and you take away australia new zealand canada what are you left with and where are all the people yeah yeah you you're, you're hunting for them it's like europe has I don't know. It makes me wonder, right? Because there, there's gaps in Europe. Like we were talking about the other day, Crimea is devoid of ancient ruins. Where, where were like the, the Slavic peoples, the Poland and my, my catalog is devoid of lots of, of ancient sites in this and in, in certain regions of Europe where you would expect, you know, if this was a long term development of a certain culture or, or you know, cultures that were competing and, and coexisting. Where's there? Where's this this long lineage of their ancient ruins, like we're seeing in mm. other regions? It's just like a gap. And of course, yeah. Russia, we know, is a black hole, and that might just be because of the nature of their government. Yeah. But like we talked about in Kronstadt, you know, it, there there's evidence that goes all the way into Russia, but it's not that old, is it? Kronstadt is, I mean, it's what's are we talking again? 1700s Victorian eras for Kronstadt, you know? We don't know, do we? This is the issue with all the dating and and the. You know, we don't know where the people are that moved all the trees, but we do know they moved all the trees. Sure. So how do you know they moved all the trees? You know, you, they, how do you know they were responsible for deforestation? Well, we, right. we do because it's written in a book. Like well, who Terra Preta. Well, yeah, like Terra Preta in South America. It's an artificial soil level. or soil it's actually layer. in Russia as well and in South Africa and parts okay. of Australia. Terra Preta is everywhere. Did we have the surplus of people to be able to create this artificial soil? It's such a Mass yeah. distribution like this, I mean, it's like they—it's like it's a prepared soil to to make a rainforest. Like, but that Charles still Kost works, talks, by the way. Charles Cost talks about it about how the 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 Amazon rainforest is like a, a garden that's like grown wild with weeds, and it's just like mm -hmm. a super garden that just you know because of that soil. But were there enough people around to do all that? You know, I just these yeah these these kind of feats. Well, I mean, like that's where it's like when I went to Tikal um, in Guatemala like I, I lived in Manhattan for five years and um, I was walking around to call going like, holy shit, I've never even heard of this place. And it's bigger than Manhattan. Like right. you're and there's 60,000 unexcavated pyramids in right. this one city alone. So you're going right. to tell me that, oh, at one point, the Mayans used to be like up to 5 million people. Like, fuck you. In that one city, there was at least 5 million people. They found um, that other one that's by LIDAR or what scanning that they haven't had a chance the to. The Mayador uh, Basin. Or... Huge. Yeah. Come on now, guys. Like, I can't believe they haven't gotten uh, more excavated. No, there. none of it makes sense. They, so they, the bottom line is you, you, you go around the English countryside and you see what you see. You then draw the conclusion as a, a, a pattern forming. Um, and then you see a similar pattern forming elsewhere, but with a different narrative. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you strip away the narrative of colonization, what you're, what you're really looking at is a, is large areas of land that were colonized. Mm -hmm. So see. you wouldn't expect to see those graves that you can't find in Britain. Right. That's point one. Now you then, you then start revisiting the trees and you say well actually well if we can't find the people that cut all these trees down how do we know that people really cut the trees down um so there are other explanations as to why you might see you know all these forests removed and it could be an explosion it could be it could be a cataclysm it could be cataclysm. a cataclysmic cataclysmic attack right yeah it, that, that's what i wonder right dan with these with these power abilities that these guys have that, that, we're, that we're discussing, you know, they could make an attack look like a cataclysm, right? Mm. You, could, you could disguise your actions 
and make it look yeah. natural. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's and, like and that book you... I just read with the King Og thing. It was, um, you know, kind of like a like a, some sort of offshoot book that never made it into the Bible kind of thing, whatever, who knows. But it was talking about a giant war and how they basically used boulders as weapons. Like they would, yeah. they could like... Yeah. And this is what I think we see in Yangshang. I think this is what you what you see in Yangshang. The my my belief is that we're not meant to know about this attack. And if that if that is the case, then we're not going to find evidence of weapons we wouldn't recognise. For example, you're not going to find an ET bombshell in the, in the in buried in someone's garden. And when you start looking at even the earliest recorded um, kind of cataclysmic writings, I know Ziggy shared some stuff with me, um, where in early 1800, they're talking about right, like meteors raining down from the sky. Yeah. Um, and the, the air is electric and there's yeah. these dark clouds coming in. And, you know, we do see round boulders, uh, you know, where the, I think it's where the Olmec heads are. We see these large round boulders. Costa Rican um, stone. Costa Rican yeah. Stones. And are they ones that simply didn't get used? And by the way, I, when I went to see the Costa Rica stones, they're different. Like they're not uniform. Like, like there, I, I saw like 11 in one park and one was like made of limestone. One's made of granite. One's like an andesite. Like they're not, they're not the same stone, even in the same little region. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And there's, there's other things that, that kind of connect to this as well. And, you question cave paintings and um, you start looking at the concept of cave painting, right? Um, one, the quality of the cave painting per se is really high, yes. which means that they, they maybe didn't evolve up to that. The people that, that the artists were able to draw quite well straight away. You don't see really primitive stuff building up to that. You don't see a, a kind of a development process. But the other thing that I find really interesting is when you go to the caves, the first thing you see is all of the cave roof and the cave walls crumbling around on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, so what are we saying that there's the cave walls crumble around the paintings and the paintings are 35,000 years old and the cave walls crumbled, or could the cave paintings be far, far more recent? And I mean, two, 300 years more recent. You know what? I've thought about the cave now, painting thing too, though. Like, well, her, finish your thought. I don't know. Well, if, for example, all of our, in, let, let's imagine a situation now, right? All of a sudden, this chat goes down. The, the, the computers go offline. The phones go down. The electricity right. switches off. Yeah. Um, you know, what are you going to be grabbing to draw with? A few biros, a Sharpie. And then if you're lucky enough, you could be actually witnessing this kind of event where all this stuff is going down and you might already be in a cave hmm. and at this point as we do this this chat there are people in caves right now there are people in wookie hole in cheddar gorge there are people in lanzarote in caves there are people visiting cave systems yeah now if, if everyone just got wiped out right now though those people will probably be most the most lucky people on the planet they'd probably be the most well positioned to survive yeah, yeah good point right if they then went outside and, and saw an event happening in skies and they've got no other form of communication, how many of those people that are in those caves right now may start etching what they're seeing on the walls of the caves in a desperate attempt to record what's happening? Mm. You know, how many of those people start saying, help, we're worried, da, da, da. you know, you, may, you might not see it happen now on within the first hour, but you might see it happening on the, the second day when he realized this shit is real and you might yeah. see it happening that's on the why second I think week water man that there's a lot of you know yeah. i think there's a lot of something too like like so Squatter david talbot symbol. done a lot of work on squatter man right dave talbot right yeah and what what he's saying is that mercury mars and venus all aligned and what squatter man in part was was the the overlapping of the planets and the moons and it creates a, a set of horns where you've got a partial eclipse now those horns change angle as you go around the, the, the planet, the position of those horns change relative to where they are in the sky as the, the eclipse will move and the horns change, ro rotate depending on where you are. 
Now, I don't think Mercury, Mars, Venus. Yeah, move. I think that's a. I don't think that's a um a prominent enough feature no. in our night but, sky to really. Be oh, not good. not as a benign, just a optical. I'm no. more into but the plasma you, arc. Well, space. but when you so if you park the plasma arc, when when you look at the Aborigines, for example, they talk about a time when the moon was dragged into position. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in a situation where we're on a holiday, something comes in, a plasma arc comes down on the planet, people witness that, they flee to the caves, they drew what they saw. They then, over the next two or three hundred years, realize they've been attacked and they, they gradually die off. Yeah. You, you then start looking at what might have happened. If you say, well, that could have been a planned, premeditated attack a planet-wide genocide to wipe these people out. These people may have known that was going on. And I think they did. And I think these people were drawing this. And I think they, they fled to the caves and they were forced to become hunter-gatherers. Yeah. And I think these hunter-gatherers did survive. And I think they survived in Wiltshire. And I think they, they made Woodhenge. And I think Woodhenge, and I, I know from my chat with, and my time spent with Robin Heath, he's convinced that Woodhenge is an eclipse predictor. Now, if you go back to what I'm saying about the Aborigines, they're saying there was a time when the moon was moved into position. And David Talbot is, talk David Talbot is talking about this, this ancient time when the, the planets aligned and created this plasma. Well, what if that wasn't an ancient time? What if it was actually something being moved into the sky that created this blast? The hunter-gatherers that we see in history are the survivors of that. The, the recolonization of those those large areas of land which are void of graves we then immediately visit those sites immediately start hunting down those hunter gatherers those indigenous people and kill them all. Yeah. yeah and you know the indigenous people they call uh like um like they call like we're in the time of the fifth sun right now they say that this is literally the fifth sun the earth has had and that the sixth sun is being prepared like that's I'm not something sure. Native American people I, say and like Mayan people. Yeah. So if this, is a, if, this is a, if this is a planned genocide of a whole planet, it would make, and that planet is then not meant to know what's happened. It would make sense to use weapons that were natural, right. rain down meteors of granite and quarry large, large areas of granite to drop it on the people. And you see that, you see that in Peru, you see that in, in, so in, in Nazca, on the Nazca lines, where there's the petroglyphs. Well, they're a distraction, spiders in the, but the real issue there is a whole mountain top that's had the top taken off. Right, yeah, Monte okay, Alban. Okay, so if, if this is all like a thing though, then are, so what are we, just food? Are we just like experiment? Are we a science project? Is this a that's zoo? All, is it a prison all, planet? We don't Motive. need, to, yeah, you, the, the issue, Nick, is that you've been really, I say you, we humans have been really programmed to say, well, if this is what you think's happened, who are we? What is, like there's a there's a an observation and, then it, and you've been programmed to respond with a question. And if the question can't be answered, then no, it I'm, means not, it's not, I'm real. not saying that it's not a true thing. Yeah. I'm just saying that, like, no, no, let's I'm go further this, with this the speculation is like yeah. what's really going on no. here. So I so I think this will happen. I, I think something coming in 700 years that around about 1700 wiped everything out. I think Squatter Man recorded the event. I think the people in the caves recorded what they saw. I think those people then put positioned as in, in, in terms of the chronology as being hunter gatherers. And I think those hunter gatherers did build tools that were measuring the eclipses. I think they, they, they were desperate to know where the moon was. Let's assuming that was part of this attack which is why they would be keen to know when there would be so, uh, lunar eclipses. Right. Woodheath, uh, Woodhenge is then literally buried and Stonehenge is then erected in the middle and then said to be three, four, five thousand years ago. Well, the, why would you do that? What would the methodology be in terms of your, your objective there? Well, these people are not meant to tell us about this event. These hunter gatherers are desperately living off the land, are, have gone to ground, they're surviving. These are people that knew what this world once was. They, that's why they knew how to build eclipse right. measuring yeah. tools. They had yeah. that technology already and they were hunter gatherers. Yeah. So what would you do if the incoming race, if incoming group of humans 
weren't meant to know about that. Well, what you would do is you would erect an artificially aged site on top of where those hunter gatherers were, and then you would push it back into the distant past. The older you could make it, the the more mysterious it would be. And the more yeah. mysterious it would be, the more you can dilute the survivor's knowledge. Yes, right. Keep the amnesia going. And Keep the amnesia going. Now, Malbec has it, and, and Athens Acropolis has it. They're, both sites say there's Neolithic evidence. Well, yes. what, what context is that? Neolithic? Now, it gets worse, and it gets even more sinister. Because what you also then see is the squatter man symbolism becomes the serpent crawling around the sword. The caduceus, right? The hermit right. staff. Right. Now, I, I don't know if you've done much research on sort of the, the darker side of history with like paedophilia and child abuse and satanic ritualistic abuse. But what you find is when a, abuse, a child is abused, they will fragment the memory so they never know it happens. And many abused victims only find out about the abuse in their 30s or 40s when they have another traumatic event and it sparks that childhood trauma. Oh, OK. Right. Now, if you have a planet that's carrying that level of trauma and they saw this Squatter Man logo, could they be reinforcing the symbolism into every moment of your life to make you remember or forget or remember and forget of this event? So the more you see the event, the more you don't want to remember what the event was because it's a trauma. So we yeah. see the serpent running up the, and we just we immediately turn a blank off and look for the alternative. And you see that in recent events globally, the, the reinforcing of the serpent around the sword mm -hmm. on a blue background mm -hmm. um, makes everyone go along. It's like, well, OK, this can't be sinister. We'll go with this other um, it's, thing. Although it's all over the medical. I mean, it's medical. Yeah, symbolism. It is the medical symbol. yeah. And, and it's a modern symbol. And I think what they may have done is taken the recent recordings the recent images and the recent drawings and then woven them into an ancient history mm. because the objective is that people saw this event happening for real 300 years ago and then they've got they've they've, they've traveled around the land and built these fake sites and we know they build these fake sites because victorians are recorded as importing ruined sites from greece and then re-erecting them in the uk mm -hmm. you know that that's a well publicized article we know that kind of thing happens so the issue i have with a lot of the ancient sites is they are a they're unfinished and they're destroyed right yeah. so they look like they've been partially built and then blown up right and nothing more yeah. I, I don't think it's anything more than that and even even um tina's work um from her site where she's saying that the pyramids are the the, the piles of bedrock that have been taken out of the tunnels is also important to, to, to in this concept because when you look at the Serapium and you look at the area around Saqqara, you can see that it's a tunnel inside. You can see that they were mining for these boxes. If you look at some of the uh, unfinished open pyramids, there are a shaft that goes down with a ramp coming out. That's all you need to do if you're tunneling for these boxes. Right. Most have got an underground south tunnel south facing tunnel most of them face north most of them are 20 22 meters deep which means that all of the granite boxes are at the same grounds level 20 22 meters the obelisks are as high as they are tall and the the um the, the pile of of, of of bricks and rock that you'd see around these shafts where you'd say that was uh the basis of a first mustava isn't a basis of myself. It's just literally the, the bedrock has come out of the ground, mm -hmm. like a like a, a builder it's digging like a hole and throwing the spoils uh, across his shoulder, right over their shoulder, right? Yeah. But of course, if you're weaving a fake history together, and no one's meant to know you're mining for these boxes, stacking them up as pyramids and engraving some snakes climbing around swords and things on them is exactly what you would do. Sure. Yeah, it, it, it's a way to, to to solidify a narrative and make it, you know, th th this is like a for, forever. Will that be there for you to and it's a distraction and think about like a distraction? Yeah. yeah. And then what do you do with the distraction? You print it on all the bloody money with a great big eye above it all. That sure. isn't the all seeing eye. It's the eyes all see in the pyramid. Right. We're all looking at these ancient at the pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. So then so then you look at two images side by side of say for example the pyramids and say 
Westminster Abbey or you know Canterbury Cathedral, Notre Dame de Paris, these kind of buildings. And the 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 cathedrals are more marvelous than the pyramids. You know, I've been in those pyramids, and yes, they are megalithic and they're marvelous. But they could be made if you had large scale lifting equipment. Yeah. yeah. Whereas when you look at the the artistry and the detail within the cathedrals and, and those kind of buildings, that you, not only do you need large scale lifting equipment, you also need uh, the creativity sure. and the craftsmanship to physically make that stuff. Yeah, just like um, India. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I think is going on. I, 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 I'm seeing this as a crime scene, mm-hmm. you know, where you'd have a cork board and there'd be a picture of suspect A, B, C, and D, and all yeah. these things. You, you look at the missing graves. You can't find evidence of the medieval people. There is a narrative to say that all these medieval people removed all the trees. Well, they're <laughs> not there. Yeah, you. You, you then look at that and say, well, is something going on there? And you say, well, yes, because we see exactly the same bloody thing in Canada, in New Zealand, in Australia, you know, and so on and so on. And you say, well, what's going on there? And then you look at the, the story of, of the squatter man, you think, well, planets can't align, align. And then you say, well, if there was a large scale genocide, who would the survivors be? Well, they would be the people living off the land in the areas where there's no people sure. that is exactly what you see in australia and that is exactly what you see in america now if the incoming people were the parasites that wanted to wipe these poor buggers out you would also see them immediately hunt down these people and when you go to america they immediately hunt down these people and when you go to australia they immediately hunt down these people and then you look at the folklore and the tales of those people and they talk about a, a different period and they talk about planets being moved into alignment and they talk about meteor storms. Green time and uh, you yeah. know, the, the Hopi creation myths and all these yeah. things. So how, so there's two elements within their history. One, what has been woven into it is a fake history. We know that we absolutely did rape and pillage the Aborigines and then dilute their bloodlines. You know, so we we see uh, the the symbolism of the squatter man being carried all the way through the corporate world. We see in, in 2012, 2014, the mainstream media saying, we're going to combat fake news. We're going to battle misinformation before attacking us with an unprecedented propaganda attack. You know, we know that through 20, 2020, that well we know in 2018 fashion forecasting brands like wgsn that are part of the guardian newspaper group which is a large-scale propaganda group were forecast in ppe colors in 2018 they were forecast in purest blue and neo neo green as in neo-nazi and purist as in you know you, you you don't want to be infected purist blue is exactly the face mask color neo green was exactly the ppe green color in 2020 wgsm were also forecast in yellow and blue for 2022 so when i'm saying in 2018 they were forecasting that color they were forecasting that color for spring 2020 and lo and behold in spring 2020 we have a global pandemic where everyone's in ppe colors and in 2020 when they were forecasting spring colors to 2022 that were blue and yellow we go to war with ukraine yeah they're, they're seeding your mind with these colors preparing you Right. Someone yeah. knows what the agenda is. Okay, how many people do you think know? Desperate. Or how many people do you think are in on this? Well, if you're... Well, look, let's assume we invade a planet, wipe everyone out and repopulate it. That kind of military operation would take how many people? Depends know. on the abilities of the of the attackers, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is these, these people that you see in these graves that date 1750, where you see no other people until 1800, yeah, they are, they're the ground crew, mission, that's ground zero, that's the first people, you know. And then you see, w, you then do more work on these people. You then look at WGSN, the fashion forecasting company, and you look at the media organisation that owns them, and you look at the people behind that and the Guardian newspaper, and it goes all the way to 1800. And the person who set all that up was 
literally writing news into the areas where there are these big cathedrals, completely controlling that narrative. Controlling How did he make all his money? And why has all that money stayed in that bloodline? And where did that bloodline come from? And then when you go into the history of that bloodline, there was another group of people um, in this area that just disappeared in 1680 and went and colonized the Netherlands. So obviously, if you look in the Netherlands, you think their history is real because they've come from Britain. If you look in Britain, you can't find a history because they've gone to the Netherlands. There's an excuse, right? For they everything. don't exist. They just don't exist. That's a great way to, uh, to you know, separate the puzzle pieces, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And this is why the symbolism is key, because what they're doing is they're using, in the same way, imagine a child raped by Grandpa Joe. Every time Grandpa Joe comes around, that child's not going to remember, want to remember that moment. Sure. So every time we see the serpent and sword, we have a natural desire to want to forget everything. And that's why we've got amnesia. So not only have we got amnesia, the amnesia is caused through the memories of the trauma mm. and symbolism reinforces the trauma, which makes mm. us want to forget the trauma. Uh, yeah, I think there, that, that is... The depth of the symbolism must be something like that, right? Yeah, it's and that's why Joel... coincidences. No, this. this yeah, and, that, and 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 to go with that as well is apocalyptic utopia, and that's being fed through our entire society. You know, Jordan Peterson talks about this in depth. What do you see on TV? Kim Kardashian, celebrity cribs, the cribs that you're never going to have, which are symbolic of the life you once had before this trauma. And then, of course, you've got the movie plots, the world's going to end, the world's going to end, which is in reinforcing the trauma right. and echoes what I'm saying about there was a life you once had. Something happened and took that away. Keep thinking about that. Keep remembering that trauma and you'll forget it because yeah. the, the pain of remembering it is so painful that you want to forget that. Yeah, it's like keep opening the wound, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, if if if. Is this all are, to make us more controllable? No, no. I, I, I think that, you know, I've done a lot of work on recently on kind of past life regression and you, you know, you, you take that what, where you want that to be, you know, we, we, do we cut, do we reincarnate and do we have lots of lives? Um, should we re be remembering those lives? Now imagine you're in a situation where the soul does remember the life and it does learn from those past lives and it does come back with the knowledge from the past life if you've just genocided the whole planet then that planet when they all reincarnate are going to be royally fucked off <laughs> so wherever you go you, and whatever you put on this planet you know that those souls are going to come back and they're going to want to kick some serious ass it may take them a hundred years it may take them a thousand years but those buggers are going to evolve and evolve and evolve and now they've got a motive to evolve. They've got a motivation and a reason to get up every day and start evolving to take the retaliation. Yeah. Now, if those souls keep remembering that into the next life, that could take millions of years, but they're going to get there eventually and they're going to seek their vengeance. So if you're genociding the whole planet, if that is what happens to the souls, would it make sense for you to lock all those souls into that planet? After you've genocided the planet, you're genociding the souls right and the trauma is carried through on the souls and the souls remember the trauma well that's why I'm and the more you the reinforce the trauma at a soul level that. yeah the more you the more you reinforce the trauma the more the souls forget where they've been and so on and so on right it's like a mouse trap that or a maze that they've yeah. Um, uh, yeah. a culture maze yeah, like and, it's, and it is as dark as you could possibly get yeah i mean it's like it makes you wonder then all cultures around the world like we say with these nub structures they're they're on temples and holy sites across culture so that yeah. this that this could imply that all these cultures are fabricated that they, they are yeah and it also implies that they are right that if they're not fabricated cultures they're a bastardization of someone else's work yeah. And the, the original issues still exist. We do not see the evolutionary pro process that developed those projects. We don't see the experimental earthquake buildings that didn't survive that earthquake that were then modified into version two. Yeah. It suggests right. that the people that, that were invaded 
may not have come from here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you may well find out that, that the people that got invaded deserved it. Perhaps they wiped out the dinosaurs and realized that or found out the hard way that they've sh- they sh- done it to the wrong planet. So like a Star Trek situation where they've broken the, uh, the prime, prime directive. Yeah. yeah. Now what, they what, and, mess with the planet when they shouldn't have. Yeah, don't fuck with our planets. This is what you get. And, yeah. and, then, and then you see other things as well that kind of support that and suggest that it may not, there may be some, a glimmer of hope in this picture of doom. Because for a long time, we've suppressed the UFOs. The UFOs are not a harm. Yeah, but the UFOs They're are safe. Scary. They don't exist. All of a sudden, they are bad. You know, if a little if a little green man walks into your bedroom at night, he's bad. Whereas before, it was just you were crazy. Uh, if you see a UAP, you know that the UAPs are potentially a threat. Well, a threat to who? Yeah. Right. Because if these are the people that have done this damage to this planet and locked us all in, I don't believe that you fly a UFO all the way across time and space, wherever you've come from, and then crash in, uh, at Roswell. I believe that you may be uh, an intelligent being flying around in a in a UFO and you get shot down at Roswell. Now, if that is what's happening and these craft are not crashing, they're getting shot down, then it would suggest that there's maybe two sides to whatever's going on here. Um, but I, I, I've i been looking at history now long enough to sort of say how... Well, that's how do where, you put that's these where I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think... For me, with, like... I'm born right outside of Roswell and um, I've been looking into all the UFO stuff my whole life and I've have had little men come into my room at night kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to think they were aliens from outer space. I used to think that. Um, this depends on how much drink you had that night when they still. <laughs> <laughs> no, even at, when I was a kid, I, I mean, my first, my first experience with an alien was when I was, um, uh like four or five like it just came in through my they came in through my window like it was glass or like it was mm. what like like the glass wasn't there and mm. uh yeah uh they it, they I, I was in a room with like my two little younger sister my younger brother my younger sister and then my little cousin we were all three like in like a c-shaped thing and they went over to like three three of them came over they went to my little uh, sister and they like all disappeared. And then three more came in through the window. They went to my cousin. And as soon as they touched my cousin, my sister appeared on the bed. And they, by the way, I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. Mm-hmm. And they're like, they were literally like, actually, I'll tell you exactly what they looked like because they were wearing clothes. They weren't naked. They looked like, if you look up a picture of Lamb, uh, who is uh, Alistair Crowley, not Alistair Crowley, what's the other one? Jack Parsons. Okay, okay anyway, Parsons. like, yeah, Jack Parsons, like, drew this person, or maybe it was Alistair Crowley. Either one of them drew, like, some stupid demon that they summoned that was mm. called Lamb. That's literally okay. what these, like, little fucking aliens looked like. And then four of them came in to touch my brother, and then four of them came in, and then, like, they were right in front of my bed, and I was trying to scream, I was trying to do something, and then uh, I saw my brother appear back on the bed. So all, all of my siblings were on the bed. And then my memory's out. I don't have anything else. It's black. That's where my memory stops. Um, so that's my first experience with um, a little gray man living. Like, but, I, you know, also the thing that was really kind of weird is that I, I lived right next to Kirtland Air Force Base. Um, next, in this, uh, in the, like, next to Sandia Labs in Albuquerque. So, I mean, I don't know, kind of like a good location for that kind of shit to happen. Okay. I don't know. Like, I probably don't, probably won't even put that in. Like, I don't care that if anybody believes me or not. But my thing was, is I used to think that that stuff was um, actual aliens from outer space. But now I think it's, um, I think, I think, I think that they're either here already on the planet, inner earth. And I think they are the controllers. And I think they are not even just them. I'm just saying like other, this other, other entities. I think that they, um, yeah, like they're the science, like we're just their science experiments or something, or I don't, I don't know. Or, or are they, or are they altering, you know, you hear stuff that this is kind of a DNA modification project. Yeah, th- they could be, I think they, those, those in particular could be, um, cause that's yeah. not the only alien type thing i've seen that's the only gray as i've seen I think the thing that i find really weird with this yeah, history androids. stuff is that um 
when you look at a lot of the Victorian buildings, especially in London, you'll find that the buildings, one, they're in a sunken basement. So the, the building is sunk into the ground. A whole a whole layer is is in the lower part of the ground. So you have this this mud flood theory, which you know is something that flooded the mud. But of course, the issue then is well, where did all the mud come from? But yeah, likewise, that that, the cloth cuts both ways on this argument, because where did all the mud go that come out of the basements? Because we know that mud didn't go into the roads, unless it was liquefaction of the ground. No, because then it would be the buildings wouldn't all stay all stay horizontal. Yeah, they would be all crooked. And, yeah, they'd yeah. be all over the place. So, so the next point around this mud flood stuff where it gets quite interesting is that every building, you see the main road, and then next to the road, you see the, the basement sunk and the first floor there, yeah? Well, it's quite wet in England, and when it rains, the first thing that will happen is that basement will flood. Yeah, sure. But it doesn't because they've built drainage into the basement. Oh. So those buildings were built in early 1800 with drainage. So in eighteen fifty, right? A sump pump is an electrical way to get the you know suck the water out of the basement. This is before that. This is designed to, yeah. by gravity, drain out, drain off. So yeah. by eighteen fifty, then faced the great stink, or I think it's eighteen fifty, eighteen eighteen maybe. Right. That you yeah. have the great stink in London where they're dealing with all the sewage. That's so right. a lot of people think they put the sewage in the middle of the roads, and then that was why the roads were raised. But I live near London, so I can I can literally go for a drive in London and you drive down, um, you drive through London, you drive into Kensington and Knightsbridge and North London, and Hackney and Haringey and Islington. And it is uh, full of side roads where there's all the houses. And as you go down a side road, it's literally a road. Either side of the basement, every single house has got a basement. Some have got two basements. And then you go to the next road, which is maybe only a hundred, only 50, 60 metres across it in a grid. And it's exactly the same again in this basement. Go to the next road and it is literally miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of houses and roads and streets. Every single one's got a basement. So where was that mud going? Forget where the mud come from. Where was that mud going? And all those basements, they never flooded because if they did, they'd destroy the foundations and the buildings would topple. Yeah. So if you're building drainage for the water, then why are you not building the sewage systems at the same time? And then why are you putting When were toilets? the sewage systems built? Well, the, the toilets were initially built in the bottom of the gardens. So you could build all these amazing Victorian houses with all this drainage system to deal with the runoff from the basements, but you forget to put a toilet in it. Yeah. I think that's weird. There's a lot of those hotels or something that were built that didn't even have any toilets. Like they'd have like 300 rooms yeah. and there was never so not a toilet built in the buildings. And Weird. That's very weird. Yeah, and then, and this is then you, you get into the the theories and the 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 that we didn't know, need the, to go to the bathroom or we were a different thing potentially. And and what were these cathedrals for? Really, were they really, you know, if this the has happened show. and this is a whole reconstruction, and what what were those cathedrals for? What what were they doing? Um, why do we see, you know, patterns forming in the windows of these large cathedrals? And why, why is it when you drive? So the, one of the theories is that these, these cathedrals are part of a, a power system that was amplifying power out of the cathedral into the local city. But what you do see is where the city is big, the cathedral is big. Obviously, the short point would be that the more people we have, the bigger the cathedral needs to be. But the cathedrals are built before the cities. So you don't have a big city and then build a big cathedral. You have a big cathedral and then you build a massive city, then you build a city around it. Now, then when you, you, so you take that theory and say, well, okay, if that's, if that's a nonsense theory, would we see that, would, w is there any evidence that theory is legitimate? And if it is legitimate, you would see a smaller scale down version of that theory in other areas, right? And that's exactly what you see in the countryside around the UK. You see a flint brick building church with a big tower on it, a nice big round window, and then literally around the graveyard are three or four red brick Victorian buildings with basements and then nothing. And then you go two or three miles down the road and you'll see another English style flint bit brick building and around that another three or four Victorian buildings. And that kind of forms a grid. And they'll see but over years, villages have turned into towns and so on and so on. But, um, but that's what you see in England. And in those, in those churches, no, there's no bodies. 
and around the fields is in, there's no there's no forests yeah it's like they're preparing the landscape for the cities and for the people the population yeah yeah and, and you know john levi is quirky and corny and entertaining uh and maybe doesn't ask enough questions but some of the work he's doing uh, around google of stuff you know there are there are grids of cities in deserts yeah. that are That's just verifiable that is verifiable google earth is perfectly valid if you if you can look it up and see it and then you know, of course if we can go there and verify that it's not the the uh photoshop from google you know the, yeah. then yeah it's, it's valid evidence and it does yeah. look weird Wait, what is he saying i don't know what... there's like large grid systems uh, that you can see from from space and it's like they're oh. not subdivision developments they're they're the, the the grid system just doesn't make sense in terms of our um, pre-planning and development and, and surveying of of cities and systems. It's just a very weird, almost circuit board like grid. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to describe without seeing what. He and just said. outside of California, and you know, in the deserts in Nevada and around Vegas, there are there are grid systems of roads and roundabouts and et cetera, et cetera which are bigger than the city. <laughs> so it means that someone at some point has been out and surveyed another city and decided they're not going to build that city. They're going to build this city or yeah, of course, the yeah. 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 Or was that original city just built on top of an older, an older site. So it's all very bizarre. Um, but if you, if you stop looking at it from a history point of view and start looking at it from a crime scene point of view, yes. um, you know, history is the witness statement of the suspect that's saying he didn't commit the murder. The murder, mm. um, or in the alternative, it's it's a witness statement from, from a megalomaniac sociopath that wants to be seen to be all powerful and wants a statue of himself slap bang in the middle of Westminster Abbey. Mm. I'm going with the first example. I I think these people are sociopaths, and I think something very sinister has happened. And I think, yeah, but I think it's, I think something sinister is happening. Oh, of course, it, of course, this, this is part of the ongoing agenda. And I think if it happened free, look, if you, if you did this and you did this 300 years ago and you were a sociopath and you wanted to seem all powerful, it would make complete sense to say that I actually did this three or four or five or six or seven or a hundred thousand years ago. And I've been in control all that time. And you are royally, royally, royally fucked. Like your power level just goes like exponentially yeah. up as long now, as if I said, I did this 300 years ago and I'm really shitting myself. I'm going to get caught out and you lot are going to wake up. Big bluff. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say with this tower of Babel that we current have that we're like enough people do wake up and we create our own like digital systems and we create or whatever, we create our own alternative society or whatever. Does this controlling elite have the power to thereby do another genocide? I think right we've already now? done it. I think we've already done it. I think like the, the, you know, the library Andrew's put together and the library we look at and we all, we all know of and, and, you know, and it's given us so much helpful information is us doing what you just said it is us taking back control it no is I, us I, I, i'm, I'm saying like evidence. i know that's happening but i'm yeah. saying at what point will we get shut down and punished well we'll find out won't we we are the canaries in the coal mine i mean it's like <laughs> yeah. we we are playing with the same jigsaw puzzle everyone else is but yeah there's a clear break between like say the top half of the jigsaw puzzle and the bottom half current events and ancient history yeah and we're trying to build up and get those two connected and yeah we'll find out how successful we are. and these fuckers are playing with fire they they you know individually we're not there's not a lot we can do um because they've got the they've got the controlling technology and the narrative and they've got the media in their pocket and they've got academia in their pocket and we know we know how corrupt academia is and that corruption can only apply to history you can't have that level of corruption in pharmaceuticals Oh no, we're better. And, we're better and people. medical. Yeah, it has to now. apply. It, it has to apply to history. Exactly. You'd be delusional if you said it didn't. Right. So these these fuckers are playing with fire because the cat is out the bag, and you know this. What I'm saying, if I'm right, uh, it is it is bad news for them, isn't it? It's uh, yeah. I mean, this is the the thread that's kind of being pulled on their. Uh, 
on their tapestry of events and it's like you can't yeah. put it back together I but mean, the cool thing is is that i do think that especially current modern day like they're inbred as the fuck like they really are um sloppy well, or are they or are they like one of the theories yeah, is these are inbred fuckers looks- and that mommy and daddy have done it and you've been living off of a trust fund and you've been given this position on this planet and you're one of the elites and you're just now a fucking blithering idiot or when you start looking at the 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 changing narrative around uaps and ufos um yeah. it may not be that it may not be, the, be that these people are incompetent it may be that these people have been disarmed and disabled without without us seeing and the reason they're doing what they're doing now is that they're desperate and i think that's what, what's happening like i think that is that they are desperate mm-hmm. and i think they're doing what they're doing because they need to put the genie back in the bottle they're trying to right yeah but what the more they push the more the more it wakes us up and so here's a thought right let's see let's say i'm right and let's say that we're the free people that have to go to this planet to put it right. And this planet is a, not this one. It's a fictitious, you know, a, a hypothetical mirror of what I've just said, right? Where the fuck do we start? Because we know that if we pull up Karen and we say, you know, you've got left-wing Karen, you know, thinks the media is telling the truth. And you say, well, look, Karen, this is what's happened. We're actually the good guys as well. That, that that's unimaginable it would be completely it, it would well what, what would happen to karen it'd be a complete meltdown yes. so karen needs to kind of think it's her idea to work this stuff out and 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 what you sort of see with all this stuff that you're seeing in the media at the moment is that there seems to be just elements of stupidity but is that is that infiltration is it infiltrating the infiltrators is it things yeah, going on maybe, from within it's, it's, it's going to get so absurd that they that they have to wake up because their cognitive yeah. dissonance like can't take them the that dissonance. far down the rabbit hole yeah, yeah. Right. and i think that's where we are i think daily i see it and it's just like how you you wonder how such incompetence could be allowed but then, then again it makes you wonder is it really incompetence? yeah 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 it's it- like the oven's gone wrong you know the thermostat's not working all the bread's getting <laughs> toasted you know it's like we're burning all the food guys you know we need new we need new chefs yeah. and um no matter how far you look they, they they you know keep throwing in the same incompetent people for you it's that's that kind of level of infiltration what i'm talking about you know it doesn't matter they they all appear to be stupid so they either are stupid or geriatric or something is going wrong and that and that that's what i think is happening and i think if this if exposing this, if the only way to expose it is to infiltrate it. It's like the emperor emperor... has no clothes, right? You know, the emperor emperor looks very important and uh, majestic. Magnificent magnificent with all his garb. But, you know, as as a naked pile of skin, he's not, you know, know, not pressed. (laughs) And it's like the Wizard of Oz, isn't it? Behind the curtain, there's a very small exactly. frow wizard yes. and you i think know, this I, is what i you're also seeing. think you you have to do this like you don't change a system from within a system i feel like you have to like come in and you have to build your own thing that that somebody goes like oh i i, I kind of would rather go to that mm. and then that's mm. how we change things we're not gonna like i don't know the other thing as well that you that you'd also see that that you would see if if you'd see counter infiltration so you'd see one the group being infiltrated and it being collapsed and corrupted and looking stupid but then you'd see the the people who are acknowledging that and witnessing that and picking up on that at the earliest stages they would be the people that you would then want to infiltrate yeah so you would you would then as people are waking up what you'd want to do is you wouldn't want them to wake up to what i've just said You'd need to you'd need to then collect them people on the way through that journey because it's a journey of getting from, you know, yeah. of you're, being you're suspicious. Them. You're you're, not, yeah. you're keeping them uh, like like uh, animals in a pen. You're you're hurting them, yeah. hurting them around, moving them like a sheepdog. Yeah, exactly. So imagine people wake up and they're like, this 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 looks like we've been attacked. Yeah. So you could you could plant things in place where you have a separate group of people convincing them it's a mass cataclysm and we're sure. even older right even older 
See, but that that's what I think is starting to happen with like the the uh, Graham Hancock, like Randall Carls and like whatever thing. And mm. I I kind of went down that rabbit hole for a while, and now I'm kind of going. Nah, I feel like that is the counter. What are they? Or whatever. What are they saying? What do they keep repeating? Graham says things are getting older and older and older. Older and older. He? Yep. And then what is Randall saying? It's natural cataclysm and it's more widespread than we all is, ex yeah. suspect. And they're all American. Yeah. All respect, guys. <laughs> you know, are they? No, Graham is Graham's they... British. Is oh, he? Yeah, yeah okay. Graham Hancock's British. So British. boom. But and even he's, in and recent he's events. The, he's the Mac daddy of it all. Yeah. And, and, so you, and you see that, that British involvement in other things as well with like the Steele dossier. You know, and you see Christopher Steele writing a dossier that's now been discredited about the president of the United States. He was in bed with Russia. And you see that kick off in 2014 while the, the UK media is saying we're combating fake news and disinformation. Right. But we but we're we're gonna run stories about Christopher Steele nonstop. Well, there's no such thing as X CIA, X M I six and X C I A. Christopher yeah. Steele is X M I six working for working for Fusion GPS. Funnily enough, he also had another dossier up to FIFA saying that Russia were bribing uh, FIFA to get the uh, the World Football World Cup. That was Christopher Steele's work. All of the doping stuff that um, said Russia was running a state-funded doping programme, that was done in Britain by UK anti-doping, went into Russia to investigate that. And obviously at the time I was exposing UK anti-doping, not investigating doping in the UK. So, you know, you see, you see this in this 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 set in the scene scenario going on months and months and months ago, years ago, um, around current events. You see WGSN forecasting the colours to support those events two years ahead of time. You see the big fashion houses rolling out their catwalk shows promoting those colors three years ahead of line because what wgsn say is we watch the catwalk no, shows and then we forecast right it the year after max What's egan that? Shows, yeah priming us max egan shows it in those uh, olympic uh, ceremony events right the one that yeah. looked like the it looked like they were yeah, the opening ceremonies the one that looked in the like, london games uh, there was there's several yeah. there was the one with the viruses and this and like a ship battle and then there was another one with all the kids in the hospital beds and all the yeah yeah that curtains. was 2012 yeah and that well, and, what I, what I think is like they're not, what they keep on priming us for right now is cyber attacks. Like to keep on talking about like the, that. So that's going to be. Yeah. Well, that might be to, to get us prepared for a breakdown of the infrastructure and they need an excuse. Like they're, they're prepping the excuses, getting them. So who's get... breaking down. This is the thing. Like if, if, if they are being taken apart, you know, ultimately taking down their news is what needs to be done. Yeah. And, and that is the problem, isn't it? It's their news and their history. It's not our history. You know, we, you, you go to Westminster Abbey and it's, you have to pay 25 pounds to get in and you're not allowed to take photos, really, or videos. You're like, well, fuck off. You know, yeah. this is my country. I live in this country and this is my history. I'm not going to pay you to see it. And I appreciate it needs maintaining and stuff. Um, but even in there, there's anomalies. Like the, the columns, um, that hold the 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 building up the main columns uh, yes, they look yes. melted some of them know? do yeah they're darker way darker than any of the rest of the architecture and yeah. they have a different sheen to them just yeah completely, completely and that out. they are crazy and and when i was in there i am um, i spoke to a, a girl who was working in there and said like how how old are they she went well they're the same as the rest of the, the building and i was like well, why do they look like they're melted she went oh, that's where people touch it all the way up the whole right. stone and that's what i corner. said anyway, well, that goes all the way to the top that's 20 foot high and she goes oh i don't know how it goes out there she goes but it did have a bandstand once no, I was like, how high was that well that was six foot still doesn't like, it. yeah i'm like do yeah. you know about the mo's scale she's like the what this is a guide who's a graduate in history she is. she's like what, what's the mo's scale well i see so you you know you're a guide in westminster abbey and you've done a history degree and you still don't know what the most scale is. I think about the hardness. geological hardness. Yeah. And she went, no, I went, do you know what diamond is? She went, well, it's really hard, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. And I went, and do you know what a human hand is? And she was like, no, went, do you know what this rock is? And she was like, nah, you know. And and, too. Yeah, on. exactly. But the, the issue is that 
if anyone was trying to make people intelligent, that that is what you would teach them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, if you was trying to make, if you was trying to teach people to be stupid, that's the stuff that you would, you would say, look, you've got a degree. You're clever. Anyone answers it, just tell them to fuck off. Yeah. But if anyone asks you the, the actual research, you know, like, just, no, just academia start. is just indoctrination well, camps. Then, then you block them on Twitter, don't you, Dan? You block them on Twitter. Yeah. And they don't ever talk to them. That's how it yeah. works. So, so look, looking at things from a murder scene perspective, you know, do cave do does cave artwork survive the years of crumbling rules, walls, floods? Well, calcification, right? If it's a wet cave, you have it's depositing more material yeah. all the time. Stalagmites, yeah. stalactites. Yeah. You know, that has to be a very uh, stable section of the cave, right? To be painted. Yeah. yeah. So like the mud flood thing, you know, the, the, it's, it's something has gone on, whatever you say has gone on. What, what do you it, think it, happened with the mud flood stuff? I'm, I'm real, always very confused about that. Like, is that- Honestly, I think, I think if you've seen a planet-wide cataclysm, it could be, it could be ash. It could be, it okay. could literally be done deliberately. Um, you don't, it could you don't know. Effect else yeah, right the, the, the issue is, is it doesn't look right so what else doesn't look right this is this is like seeing the murder you know and there's a, a blood on a napkin and it's like so what does that tell us about everything it's like well i don't know it's just the blood on the napkin yeah there's Whose so blood more. is it yeah, where yeah. was the napkin who yeah. blew their nose on the napkin yeah you know so it's it's not until you start looking at the mud floods you say well look let, let's let's park the mud flood Right. Let's ask another question. Let's ask where all the mud from the basements went, because we know it didn't go on the road. Now, if you think it did go on the road, that means that every single building was built at exactly the same time. It would have to have been, right? Yeah. Um, or as they built buildings, they constantly spread it like butter on bread across the road. We dig another building, dig another basement, and we sweep it out. One bizarre explanation is that the horses shit and piss on the road. Right, yeah. you didn't want them shitting pissing on your road. So what oh, yeah, you do is so. you pile up your your bud so it runs off to your neighbour. Now, <laughs> obviously, they didn't want it pissing and shitting on their road. So what they did is they piled up there so it ran onto the next neighbour. And gradually, week by week, month by month, year by year, the process continued That's until the, the roads got higher and higher and higher. Yeah. Well, where did they get all the bloody mud from? This is 1850, 1820s England in a so it's city. Just horse manure. Yeah. yeah. What is it composed of? Yeah. A midden heap of just all kinds of refuse. What and the other issue with it, of course, as well, is that when you build into the basement, people say, well, that's why they put the servants. Fine. OK. They were on a budget. They wanted to put a basement in the ground. Right. But of course, there was no real limit to how high you could go. So the, the course of bricks that you used to, big deal, to build the basement with could have been used on the top. Furthermore, yeah. you've also got to have a course of bricks retaining the road because and if you don't put the course of bricks into the road the road tumbles into your basement yeah. Sure. yeah so you could have used two courses of bricks actually gone up gone up two levels yeah so so the point there is if you were building it for servants you'd actually put a few windows in the roof well that is actually what they did do and that's where most of the servants actually lived mm -hmm. and it also assumes that every building in every in all of london had a resident that had access to servants. Yeah, right. So, so, so where did all the servants come? What was going on there? Yeah. So, so you look at the mud flood stuff and and you, you sort of realise that is open to um, infiltration to spin it into melted mountains. Sure, yeah. How do you... And, that, and that's, when you, that, so that's, what, that's when you... So that's when you see signs of infiltration. Whole mountain ranges, ranges are melted people and some of them even look like faces and they were the titans no that's wholesale bullshit yeah that's taking it way too far in the womb yeah, you know? yeah. but that is being done deliberately that's that's taking people that are waking up they're intuitive and then taking them down a, a rabbit hole too far wrong rabbit hole the, the issue is that you know that, that what's going on here is you can you can see it as a crime scene you know the mud floods is one thing right you then go into um, northeast Siberia and you look at the coastline and it's full of potholes and craters. Yeah, the Carolina Bays as well. Yeah, right? which, is, which, then, which then mirrors what you see in Siberia. So in Siberia, what they say is these, these big puddles and these big craters are caused through 
uh, primer frost, I think. Is it primer frost? Melt in, yeah. get frost yeah. on the ground, it falls out, creates a puddle, frost overnight, builds up and builds up, and it creates these puddles, and the puddles build these like pancake shaped flat sections. Fine. Well, you also see the same thing in Caledonia Bay is in central, is it east coast, north, central east America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you see the same thing in Australia as well. Yeah, the chevron shapes. I remember seeing those. Yeah. yeah. So you see that and you say, well, what's happened there? You then see uh, Yangshan Quarry, which is mm -hmm. void of any rock that's been quarried. They've like, quarried the rock and it's gone. God, it's where is it gone yeah you then look at the pictures of yan shang from 1800 and like i'm saying locally there's no forest zero trees i mean it is a zero barren, barren landscape yeah none yeah. so then just the forest suddenly regrows right you guys heard of the vanilla years. sky theory no it's like all the pictures before um 1911 don't have pictures of the sky or like they're yeah. blurred out kind of thing or whatever oh, and oh, so the, i think i've heard parts of that yeah or at least yeah. people try to interpret that yeah. yeah and you see that and you see that and you know and then you could take that as an observation to say well, why um and then you could say well we had steam powered like you know elephant driven ostrich <laughs> feathered uh you know, air Dragons. balloons that delivered candy floss to everyone. Well, like, no, the, the short point is that the skies have been removed from those pictures, period. We don't know why. Yeah, but they they have, they do appear to have been removed on a, on a lot of occasions. You then look at the, the ancient architecture and you say, well, we see unfinished buildings that have been destroyed. You know, and that is what we see. We then see in Peru houses that have supposedly been built to hold a roof. Then we see houses that have got a roof and you can see the construction shows little indents in the in the, the, the roof sections that hold the beams that support the roof. And then in Peru, you don't see that. Well, how did they put the roof on it? You know, if they ever had a roof on it. And that's yeah. where the the small fuck ups are what are important. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, pebbles in the detail. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and the whole thing with with softened rock, that could be one form of technology that's been kept secret from us sure. just one small element imagine if we had yes yeah, still phones. even if you can soften it how you lift it yes yeah, so yeah. here's the situation right we remove smartphones from everyone we pretend they didn't exist but we control the smartphones still and then we we place them into our past because obviously no one's no one no one will never know that smartphones existed so all you need is one small piece of technology that you keep secret that you then use to then put into the past to make the past feel mysterious. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we just all had on our smartphones the rock, so rock softening app. Right. We go out into the garden and it just kind of levitates some granite blocks and we make it into a new wall, right? Imagine if it was that simple and we all had that, yeah. um, but you kept that secret. What could you? What influence could you do with with, a, with a, a piece of technology that you didn't give to people right. imagine right. any part like satellite dishes for example like just a piece of our modern technology plastic mm -hmm. whatever it could be that you just don't give to people but yeah. you covertly use to create a mystery yeah how different our reality would be it would confuse everyone about how it was done because it's it's outside their toolkit i mean completely yeah so. yeah. yeah yeah and and there seems to be evidence they you, may have tried to do stuff and change their mind as well. So uh, underneath the bent pyramid in, in Doja, you see these 50,000 carved bowls that That's look right. like they've been put on a lathe That's until right. you get to the handles and the handles are flat. So it means that the, the cutting device must have rotated around the, the, the subject it was cutting, the item it was cutting, the object it was cutting rather than the object being cut on a rotating device. Or yeah. they could, you know, like like Andrew said, like they could almost will, like weld, or basically, you know, they can weld stone where we can't. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the, yeah, but on the... Bob's too, he thinks that some of the nubs are like tacked on, added after, not pulled from yeah. the stone, yeah. but added back. That's something to think about. I, that's yeah. something I don't know. Yeah, and, and that is obviously what, 
a perfect distraction because if we didn't have the nubs at Yanshang, we'd be looking at Yanshang Corey and going, well, what's going on here? Like the, the fact is there's these big nubs and we're talking about the nubs. Mm -hmm. If you remove the nubs, the conversation be may become different. It would. Just it about would. the size and the, and it would the size and where did it go? up on our radar because we were hunting for nub sites and that was you know found through that research so without Fruit those nubs. it doesn't really pick up on our radar we don't we're not it's not in our classification of uh, details and hallmarks yeah yeah so what's really going on for a lot of this stuff you know it's um when i was in egypt i saw some hieroglyphs where they've been um drawn on the wall with a grid so you know you know when you as a child you you in your maths book you'd have the gridded paper and you draw a face on it and then you'd go outside and you'd you'd make every square that was maybe five millimeters by five millimeters you'd make it 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters and you draw it out and enlarge it right well that's how we do it in art class yeah that's the typical scaling exactly and you see that in egypt now on the wall would have drawn the grid out and when i was with yosef he was like look look at this this is how that how long that technique has been used you know what is it <laughs> you know is, is, is it our technique that we have used, that we always use, and we were using it in Egypt, and this bit just forgot to bit get wiped off or erased, and yeah. the easy way of dealing with that is just to weave it into the past. Yeah, just weave it in. Yeah, it's this like this is a, what you see. Modern evidence that they are trying to excuse away or try to erase as ancient. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I watched an, uh, um, an interview with Alex from stolenhistory.net. Okay. Um, and he was saying there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it, a lot of the art, the kind of the Egyptian artifacts that you see, the kind of the wooden stuff, the mummies and the sarcophaguses are fake. There's evidence that he was saying he's seen where they've literally got proof that they had warehouses and local Egyptians just knocking out this stuff. I wouldn't deny and, it. And selling it into the black market as, as, as legitimate. That's, you know? I mean, think of how much money is going through the black market of Egypt, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those, the granite bowls um, that I was talking about just now, I think they're about three or 4,000 US per bowl. Yeah, there you go. Um, and you can buy them. In, and, you know, there was some on eBay at one point. That's how easy <laughs> it is to get hold of this stuff. Um, so if you could put granite on a lathe and remanufacture those things in the same, like, I think with those, you, you physically can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> the Andesonite you can ones you can't. And it's the Indian columns. Way. Yeah, some of those columns in India, they're just not doable. Yeah. No, no. Or, or so what are we seeing? You know, it's, I think there's, a, there's something in this squatter man thing. I think there's something in the indigenous people. I think there's something in Woodhenge and Stonehenge and there's the Aborigines saying they, they witnessed the moon be moved into position. And then you have in Wiltshire people desperately trying to record solar eclipses. Sorry. Why else would they, would they focus on something? You, they, they, the mainstream excuse is agriculture, right? But no, these kind of constructions are not being done for something so mundane. This is no. an important reason. Like really and how important. do you know about it as well? Like we, you know, we've all lived through, lunar eclipses right they're the, probably the least that, that they are you, you wouldn't even know you know unless it was on telly the tv yeah. and they're talking about you wouldn't know it's not like you open the window and the sky is gone purple or some crazy shaking. color and you're like god look it's the eclipse you literally most of the time it's covered in cloud right you don't yeah. know it's happened you but here we are looking at these nice ancients in wiltshire it was yeah. there what were they, why you know you got to ask why the, the were they waiting why? for the? Were they trying to get a message out? Phone home, help. Mm. Yeah, you know, but I, I, what, what? First of all, I don't know how you guys can like. Sometimes this stuff depresses me, like the mm. the the complexity of the lie, is mm. is hard to like deal with sometimes. But uh, also the the thing with the eclipse stuff is, I don't know. I also think about what if uh what if time wasn't different or what if it was kind of like um you know that what's that movie stargate where it's like they come like the controllers come out at certain times so maybe like the moon people would come on the eclipses so they would like they needed to know so that they the could hide or it, there yeah. was something like it sounds but, I think that, but it that could... stuff 
overcomplicates yeah. things. You know, it's like saying what happens if you go to the supermarket after work and it shuts at nine, but what happens at one minute past nine? They'll turn into werewolves and start having orgies and it all goes crazy and mystical. <laughs> they go home for dinner mm-hmm. and go to bed, you know? Um, and that's what I say about counter infiltration and how much, how much, how much stuff is there that's been woven into this as a, as a distraction to keep your mind occupied because you know, the thing you say is this is depressing, right? And it is, you know, it was depressing every day when you woke up in Auschwitz, you know, but you are where you are, unfortunately. Um, and, and that I think is the harsh reality. And I, and I think the, I think the memory of it as well is in our psyche somewhere and we don't want to remember this. And I think we'll do anything we can to not make this real. Um, nothing adds up, you know, Stonehenge is clearly suspect. Uh, you know, I've been there, I've done the work on it. I've looked at it. I've asked the questions on it. Woodhenge is there. It is real. It does line up. It does line up to the, so wait, uh, Woodhenge eclipses. is just the post where the wood would have gone, right? Basic posts in the ground. Like Robin will tell you, Robin will tell you, give me 53 or 54, 52, whatever it was, one foot high bamboo sticks, and I'll teach you how to predict eclipses forever within half an hour. Mm. Right? These people knew basic astronomy already, right? They stuck wooden poles in the ground because it was quick, it was easy, and it's all they needed to do. All well, you need to do, yeah. That knowledge. Well, that's the, um, that Greek, what is that called? The um, Antikythera machine or how? Antikythera mechanism. Antikythera yeah. mechanism. Yeah. When they, they've Out done the reconstructions history. of that, it's an eclipse predictor. Yeah. So something was going on. And if that was going on, and if that was an invasion, and if these people were those survivors, what would you do if nobody, the new group, the new humans were not meant to know about this? Well, what, what you do is you there would be two things. What, what the first thing you'd need to consider is this, right? You can hunt the buggers down as much as you want, but you're never going to be certain that you've got all of them. Right. If they had knowledge that survived, and you're wiping that out and you know you're not going to get all of them then you need a plan b yeah and that plan b is to take that knowledge and turn it into propaganda and dilute it and move it back move it yeah. far back way yeah. back through history and indoctrinate and them from a really young age to where yeah, that's, they that's and a then, plan right uh, a contingency plan yeah and then create a distraction on the same site and that would be the creation of stonehenge and then you get everyone looking at Stonehenge, not questioning Woodhenge, not questioning the eclipse predictors. And then you, you know, you bring in all the pagans and everything else and you create the history of paganism. Well, that's just the knowledge of the survivors you've just w- wiped out. Hmm. But run through a, f- a filter, a screen. Yeah, and it's two or 300 years old. But what we do is we put it back through the filter, like you say. Mm-hmm. But of course, what we need is kings and queens. So where do we get the kings and queens from? Well, the surviving groups may have had leaders, you know, like you see on these apocalyptic zombie things where there's a small groups, pockets of survivors, and they'll always have a leader. Or, yeah, sure, right. And then you just weave the leaders in and out of this history, making kings and queens and everything else. Or um, the kings and queens could have really been in on all of it and you needed somebody. Probably to- a combination of all of it. Probably a combination of people who are in on it. Elites, controllers clans mm-hmm. gangs you know sure. a lot of gang style activity i think i think these are, these are glorified gangs uh, yeah. in terms of their, their behavior one, a one world their, mafia yeah, um, yeah well, very, very much so yeah very much so. and i think i think that is what you know the way that you look at these controllers here who are doing this stuff now they're not in control you know they, they are nothing more than prisoners who are top dog who are yeah. you know Maybe but taking not- one from the warden so he can let he can let and bring in a bit of heroin, um, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So they're nothing more than that. They're selling their soul to the devil just so they can yeah. be top. That they're still here with us, trapped here, right? You know, serving someone. And this is the thing. And, and so I don't, I don't, you know, I can't be sure what's going on. This is just my theory and where I'm at with this research at the moment. But like I say, it's based on. One, David Talbot's work with Squatterman. We know that something was recorded in the caves. 
I don't believe all of those cave paintings all survived all that time. I, th I believe they're recent. I believe the, the people who witnessed this event recorded it in those caves. I think they lived off the land afterwards because they were forced to. And I think they were different to us. Definitely. And then it's been reseeded through the orphan trains, repopulation of the buildings, oh, building toilets out in the gardens because it wasn't built, you know, all the stuff we spoke about. And I think hunting down those hunter gatherers or those survivors would be exactly what you would do if you were recolonizing those lands and you wanted to get rid of all that history. And that's exactly what we did do. And I, I can't see. So what do you think about the whole, like allowing things like the dragon man skull to come out? I always think like, or the Denisovans have been discovered. I think it just adds, time. adds more layers Add to more, this. More stuff. It could be something else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, it's hard to understand to, to know for sure if we're getting these discoveries in the proper context. So it's mm -hmm. like they might find a, an, an inconvenient piece of evidence, but then twist it to actually work for them, you yeah. know, and how they present it. We know the mainstream lie, right? And we know that whatever they're saying, the truth is pretty much the opposite. Right. That's a and, good and, that's a good groundwork to go from. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and at the moment, they're saying, you know, aliens are dangerous. History is really old. You know, everything is more mysterious. And there was cataclysmic events that wiped out a former race. That's exactly what you would do if you knew there was a danger that the people on the planet would start thinking that there was a former race and it got wiped out. It's especially what you would do if the former race were coming back and putting their people on the planet to tell you that's what just what, what is, that is what had happened. So that's the other risk. If this is what's happened and we're all being lied to, there's a realistic possibility that these people are putting people back to say, this is what's gone on. So, you know, do you preempt that? Do you start weaving it into your mainstream narrative that, you know, there could have been another group of people. It could have been witness to a cataclysm. It could have been wiped out. Um, people are like, well, you know, anything goes at the moment. It's sort of like, yeah, but you're still plugged into the TV and you're still, you know, playing along with all the bullshit. Right. So, like this, you know, this is my view, and this is this is what I see it as, as someone who's looked at this stuff. Like I've been to Rome, you know, I've been to Stonehenge, I've been into London doing my research on the on the buildings in there. I have mean, worked in London a long time. I've always walked past basements with windows sticking out of the pavement and thought nothing of it, and now I'm looking at you know, my former self going, how the, how the fuck did I think that was normal? Right. You know, and a, you know, a one foot of a window sticking out of the ground that's been bricked up. You know, why would you build, why would you build the, the ground level of a building and just think, well, my we're school in was the, in the Bedford window. square and it, 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 or we had a base in London. Yeah. In yeah. London. Yeah. Where I went to grad school. They're good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was in Bedford Square, and I remember there was a little patio even in the, like, in the back end of the building that was sunken down, like, and I remember yeah. when it would rain and stuff, I'd be like, where is all this, what, why is this, this is a really bad design. Yeah, and some have got, like, two basements, you know, I've been in buildings, I've got, I had a lot yeah. of customers in it London. It had a double in. basement. Yeah, double basement, so, you know, that... <sighs> You, you need to put your mind in that position, right? It's 1800, it's crappy, it's wet, or it's bone dry and it's really hard. You've got a shovel, everyone's dying of cholera, and you're just digging down and down and down and down and down, when all you really need to do is just build, build it up, use the bricks. that You, you need the bricks anyway. If you're building the foundations, you're, you're still using the bricks, right? Shore it up. Of course, you got the foundations the for the basements is, even as well. If it was a mud flood or it was a ash covering thing or whatever. Why wouldn't it be easier to just, I don't know, cart all the all the debris out? No, because you have wiped out the people that had those buildings, and you're repurposing those buildings. Okay. It's a planet wide takeover. That's how it would fit. Is if there's no one left to to to, to yeah. do anything okay that's what happens you know and the, whenever you dig in london 
And whenever you come across bones, the first thing that happens is natural heritage come in, take over the site, send everyone home, board it all up, put the curtains up, and miraculously find some Romans or Saxons. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Smithsonian is guilty of that yeah. stuff. Mound builders and everything. I suspect that if you took every single Roman Saxon artifact that is spread over this whole planet, you would barely fill up an IKEA. I think if you took an IKEA and you you you, you then went one for one, I think you could you could convince everyone that all the ancient there's enough in one single IKEA store to rewrite history. And if you wiped everyone out now and the only thing that survived is an IKEA and you just meticulously scattered that around the planet. Yeah, right. That's all you'd need. Yeah. That's all you'd need. And and then what you do is you just you just cement that bullshit with um, a few key structures that you put on the money, a pyramid, you know, an amphitheater or two, you know, and it works really well because if you're using the buildings that are already there, then you just got to, you know, you just got to use them. Yeah. Um, because what I'm not, what seems to be the case is there was probably someone, if the mud flood theory and all this stuff is right, something else was here. If the mud flood theory is wrong and it's complete bullshit, the ancients who we are studying say that something else was already there. Even the Egyptians say that there was a site already there. Right. And you look at the, um, the Valley Temple and it shows you that there's a site already there. Yes. The stuff that looks the same as the Corrikancha is built on top of a eroded walls that look ancient, millions of years old. Right, right, right. And then you're getting into anomalies around the Corrikancha, you know, I first looked at the Corrikancha and thought, well, it means that the Valley Temp, the Corrikancha must be a lot, lot older because we know Egypt is older and therefore the two can't be the same. Whereas now, then I started thinking, well, maybe the Valley Temple is a lot newer and it, the Corrikancha is the right date. Mm -hmm. Or you just look at it and say, well, they're both manufactured mysteries. Exactly, right. Or operation bases of this group in the yeah, same way that... Yeah, you know, they were repurposed or, or reclassified as ancient sites. And I think that's why a lot of people look at Saxon and say, well, they were sandbags. I think they're not sandbags. I think they don't look like sandbags. But I think Probably. people people yeah. see that fear, that theme and deep down somewhere in their psyche or their subconscious that it resonates. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah. And, and I think they, they go back to this, this kind of wartime environment. And that, that's what I think you see with a lot of this nub stuff. I think, I think they are potentially bases of operations that have just been repurposed into history. I, I'm, I'm open to that too. And I've, I've been thinking about that more lately. Yeah. Like walking to the beaches in Normandy and seeing all the sandbags and the armaments there and saying, well, they were the Romans. Yeah, the pillboxes. No, that's a, that's a shrine actually where a, a lingam goes and you worship there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I... I don't know. I, you know, you know, I think I, I want to put this out there to get feedback on this. You know, maybe I'm wrong. You're going to find um, very few people who, who can actually, you know, go this deep into the conversation and, and not be you know horribly biased one way or the other. It's like you still to keep an open mind and go this deep is very you know rare to find that yeah. ability in people. You know, usually by now, someone has become so married to an idea that they that's as far as they go or they're they're scared off and they won't go any farther than this. So it's, it's really hard to find the good criticism at this level. I agree. I agree. It's, it's like we end up just going around in circles with each other because there aren't enough of us. And the, the yeah. timeline, um, people are really ingrained with that timeline. They, they really, are. really want it to be older or, yeah. you know, it, it makes it more, uh, makes you know, mysterious. They like, like, again, that romance, right. That Dan and I talked about the romance of history. They like that part. You can't, you got to kind of break up with that part of it. Yeah. And that's been what, and that, uh, that's really important as well, because if you was doing what we, what we're discussing today, you would, you would do everything you can to make it romantic as well. You'd have the stories of Cleopatra, you know, yeah. lust and the love and, you know, yeah. all this kind of like romance that goes with it, because yeah. that is part of the distraction. And the reason that romance works because you are, you are still carrying the trauma and you'll do everything you can to avoid the trauma. So getting you stuck into some good old, you know, romance and some alternative, you know, some 
all those know, play, playing on all those aspects, right? Emotions. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think they know our psychology more than we do. I think the key is, I agree. you know, any, anyone that's researched um, fragmented memories and abuse and that stuff will know how that works. You know, people's memories fragment in traumatic situations. They can't remember it. Um, and I think we're all carrying that. And I think that works and it works particularly well with symbolism. Yes. So um, are we the victors? Are we like, are we like the byproduct of the vic of the victors or are we? No, I, th I, are we I, I don't, you know, it's again, it's questions. I don't know. Um, yeah. I yeah. suspect there's something going on with, with that. It's more than just destroying the physical people. I think there's an element to create containers and lock those souls into those containers on the way out. Right. Um, it's easier. It's way easier to just control flesh and bone. You know, we, it would be a literal prison planet. It would be nothing but, you know, uh, high security prisons all over the planet. I mean, it's really easy. If you wanted to lock down humans into that level of, you know, servitude, you could, but there is, there's this like, it's weird. It's it's like a uh, an imprisonment, but also uh, with a with a dash of freedom. And it's like you don't know how much sovereignty you have. And, and Nikki and I talked about that in the last one. It's like it really is. When you get into this deep, it's like your 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 guarantee of sovereignty, or your at least your your internal, you know, what you've always thought your your level of sovereignty was. It gets rattled, and you know. You well, there's really a perception of freedom because there's an organic prison cell that your soul is trapped in so those organic prisons need to keep breeding and reproducing to keep bringing your soul back into those those meat machines mm. so the soul is trapped in the human form and it and it's surviving here and it's fine because you want it trapped here mm. and it seems to be the case that there's a a mechanism that are that the soul moves on from outside so if the planet was inv was invaded all of those souls are going to reincarnate with that memory elsewhere potentially on a whole other planet and then evolve and go we remember this we need to go and do something about it we're still royally pissed off mm -hmm. uh, is there a mechanism or a need to contain those souls within the planet you've just destroyed so you're you're invading and wiping. Well, so that's you're, you're where conquering the esoteric an stuff enemy. comes in. Like, yeah. like esoteric stuff. They talk about. Um, I mean, this is. I. It was also in that the the prison <laughs> planet book I read, like the in, interview with the alien, where the Roswell alien basically says that, yeah, uh, when you die, when you go into the light, that's the reincarnation loop, and it's basically the prison. Um, it's like a plasma prison thing that's put on our planet that keeps your soul from leaving the planet. So you just go back yeah. and forth, back and forth all the time. And it, it's, it, and it gives you amnesia when you go through the, the light. So mm. that, that was, that was, but that's not just that concept. Like that concept comes from, um, there's, uh, some Hindu text or something. I don't know what, yeah, of course, but yeah, yeah, like where, um, yeah. and there's some other people who talk about how, um, you might consider because like in christianity it's like go to the light you know or everybody will be like go to the light when you die you know but then well you then reincarnate say, and come back you're trapped in and this is why yeah. so imagine imagine everything i'm saying is right don't go to light <laughs> right what you would do is you would you would let people nearly die and then you would say no it's not your time you go back tell everyone how beautiful oh, the light yeah, is. yeah that's true yeah the near yeah experiences. And if the larger corporate world knew about this stuff, you would see videos like that, like gaining massive, massive traction on YouTube. And, and you do see that. You see those videos. There's one particular guy, I think he had like 80,000 80, followers, but the video had got 6.7 million likes or viewings, sorry. Okay. So he's either paying through the nose to promote that or YouTube are doing it for him. And if yeah, YouTube are doing it for him, there must be something in that I know it's a nice lovey dovey story, but equally, if you was if you was um, wanting souls to keep reincarnating back into the same prison, you would tell them that the light was beautiful and everything, and that's where you should go. Um, 
And this is the thing. There seems to be something more outside of that. And there seem to be, there are people that are souls that are literally saying that they're, they've not been here that long. I, and I, I, I know that I, I came here on purpose and I do have some past life memories and they aren't human. And mm. I intentionally came here. I know mm. that I've always known that since I was born, I've known that. Um, yeah. And I don't think I've been here long. No, and I think, I think that's kind of echoes what Dolores Cannon is saying, um, where she's saying there are, you know, Way of course the other, the other option could be that, it is a karmic planet and we do reincarnate and we learn from the karma and someone else is, is, is fucking with that and, re and wrecking that. So everyone's actually locked in forever, ah. um, but it doesn't explain the ruins and doesn't explain the tangible stuff. I don't think it is as woo woo as that. <laughs> I, I think it is, I think it is more tangible, right? We are trying to colonize Mars, right? We, you know, have traveled space, supposedly we've landed on the moon. You know, our ambition is to live in a Star Trek world. You know, when we've when we're in that position to do that, looking at current events, looking at current politics, looking at how corrupt the current world is and the fact that the wars are largely fake. Iraq had no weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. We what I'm saying happened is not only is it possible and feasible. It's actually what we're doing now. The people that are in control are still doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. They're doing it right now. They're doing it in Ukraine, around Russia, Palestine, you know, wherever you look, they're doing this. And that's why it's important not to bury your head in the past because yeah, the current events are like, the, yeah. this narrative is still going. It's not like they're two completely divorced concepts, the ancient past no, yeah. and the current events. And those wars are wiping out the history. It gets worse. That, well, I, that's what I think wars are. I think they, I think they're just to go to completely sanitize the story. I mean, like, look, mm -hmm. look at what we did to Afghanistan. Look what we did. I mean, look at the places mm -hmm. that we destroyed in Afghanistan. Look what ISIS destroyed. Like they intentionally went to ruin cities. I can't remember the name of that big one they went to, but, and, and you're, you're just going like, there's not even human, there's no people there. There's not like, there's mm -hmm. literally no reason you would go destroy an ancient roman city or whatever they were calling there it. was a real and realistic fr threat that glepi tepi was going to be wiped out or destroyed oh. or blown up by isis that's right i remember that yeah, mm. yeah. so yeah. so at the time that was the oldest carbon dated building etc cetera, etc cetera, and it was buried deliberately yeah and i am you know? here in tepi. so what what was happening there you know it's got pinch holes on it i know that so those pinch yeah. holes uh, yeah. if it did all this yeah. other timeline stuff then Maybe it was made the same time everything else was made. Yeah, there, there's a big jump between no well, people around. Bullshit too, but you know. it's, yeah, it's so hard to go by that. You know, I'm I'm really firmly of the opinion that it's it's these traces that we we all look at is the most you know authentic way to 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 decide which structures are a part of this and which ones are are not a part of this. Yeah, yeah. So that so you know what I'm saying in my view. And obviously I would say that because it is my view, um, <laughs> you. but it, it's, it's, it's the only way that you can kind of piece all this stuff together, whether it's current politics, past history, orphan trains, you know, the, the, the history of the people that was maybe here before this happened, whether they were human or, you know, whatever, um, is there still there to see, we can see the star forts, we can see the cathedrals, we can see these buildings that don't make sense. And we never get told, we, you know, we, we grow up and we go to school and they tell us about the Greeks and the Romans. They never once ask us how the cathedrals were built in the same way that they ask us how we think Stonehenge or the pyramids were built. If you take away those mysteries, let, let's like rewrite our education, right? The, the mystery we're all hanging our hat on is how were the pyramids built? Mm -hmm. right. Take that away. And what are you left with? Well, that's like that, that, that is the, the feather in the cap for everybody's Rolodex of ancient site knowledge. You're going to have to yeah. go to Peru or, you know, yeah. one, one of these other, like you said, the Greco Roman stuff. The, uh, yeah. So you've got a few Greek Roman stuff, you've got Peru, and you've you know got. No, they don't do anything anymore. Like my nephew's 14, and like, a, like if I talk to him about history, which I always talk to my nieces and nephews about 
Nikki's version of history. <laughs> um, but uh, the thing is, is that uh, they don't even teach anything. They teach them like about Martin Luther King. And then they teach them mm. about, uh, they call it, they don't even have history in high school now, but like in my, my, my nephew's high, it's a, what is it called? It's like a, so it's not even social studies. It's cultural, cultural, um, sensitivity, uh, something, I can't remember what it's called, yeah. but like okay. they learn about like what I was doing homework with them recently. And it was all about, uh, this refugee from here came in and this, and then like you read their story and then you had to summarize what their story meant. It, it, they don't do like regular history. No. They don't even have, yeah. Well, my kids don't like, I'm, you know, you, you look at the history they get taught and it, there's no history because it's falling apart. You know, like I, I'm asking my children what they're getting taught. So I can say, well, when you go back on Monday, ask your teacher about the Mo Scout. When they're teaching you about Stonehenge and the, you know, the Iron Age and these buildings and the, you know, ask them the, about the tools. You know, and they, they, my kids know about the Mohs scale. They know that Bronze Age, Iron Age tools can't cut hard granite. You know, they've seen all the pictures that we discuss and, you know, they, they watch this stuff. If they go to school and they get taught history, the first thing they're going to be doing is calling bullshit on it. So they, they just don't teach them history for that reason now. Uh, you know, and that again is is part of this this crime scene men mentality. You know, if what we're saying is right, that is exactly what you would do. Agreed. Yeah. Just don't address it. Yeah. 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 Just don't teach them it. You know, and this and this is what we're seeing. All all of these all of these pieces. There's so many things that you 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 can look at and question. Um, you know, like why are these sites? out of bounds in a lot of locations why do we go to these sites and we get there and you know we'll see areas it, you know, in it or, yeah a tour I mean, operator will make an advert on facebook ads we'll see it on facebook ads we'll fly to peru you get to peru and they say sorry you can't see this 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 and this you can only see that right you know so well this is our ancient history you know this is part of our planet who said you you know what Who's, who, who are you to say, oh, I can't see this piece of our history? Unless, of course, it's all bullshit. Yeah. The motives yeah. for not letting us see are not what we think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're locking it down even more. And and once it's unlocked, you'll find that the price of fuel will be the next well, the, the thing that restricts you. It's no secret that they're blocking travel. You know, there's two large-scale propaganda campaigns that have run in the last two years. The key objective of both is to restrict stay home. Travel. Yeah, stay home. Don't go yeah. nowhere. Yeah. Stay at home or you ain't going to be able to go anywhere anyway. So we don't even need to push that anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and that's and that's where we're up, where we are. It's it is depressing. But I think the more people start thinking this and questioning this, um, the more progress we can make, um, because if I'm if we do call bullshit on all this stuff and we do demand more evidence and find out it is bullshit, then we're completely disarming these, these, these parasites that are running the show at the moment. Yeah. Makes us feel uh, like we have more power than we really do. If, if that's the case, if we're influencing this kind of stuff. Yeah. And if we, if we said this did happen only happened 300 years ago, and there's a group of morons behind the scene pretending it was thousands of years old who created the fish tank reality you know, with fake galleons and fake castles in it, mm -hmm. or real castles and real galleons, which are ours anyway, that are being presented back to us as some kind of satanic ritual ah. to confuse us. Um, you know, then they, you know, that'd just be like, it, it would just fall flat on its ass, wouldn't it? Yeah, but there are those two potentials, right? You know, it could be all ours, but subverted back to us or none of it's ours, right? Yeah, I think it's, a personal, I think it's a bit of both. I think there are clear, you know, from what I'm saying, there was clearly something else going on, someone else going on. Um, you know, and you know the saying, you can only piss with the cock you've got. So <laughs> I don't know that saying, but okay. <laughs> or, or you can say- Well, you there is a woman's it. version of the same. Um, yes. But it makes sense to use what you've got, doesn't it? And if there are destroyed buildings, that are Greek Roman in style. Yeah. And 
and they're, they're the Victorians and the Romans just weave a load of fake history in between and keep keep the good ones and say the bad ones of Roman ruins. It's yeah. The way we say it is uh, you got to dance with the girl you brought to the dance, you know. <laughs> it's nicer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's good like that. <laughs> So yeah. that's what that's where I'm at with it anyway. Like, and that may change. You know, everything's everything's changing, isn't it? It's not it's all up to whatever the current events, whatever the winds start blowing. You know, whichever yeah. way. Yeah. So, so, I, so if anyone's watching this video, you know, I would just like them to think that way for a bit and see where it gets them. You know, we, we've always been big fans of saying, "Well, look, we know what we were taught at school. Um, take that, put that in a box, leave it there." Don't throw it away. You might need it and come back to it. And what I'm saying is, is keep that in that box. The stuff you've got in the, in the new box, start rummaging around in that a bit more and, and start joining all the dots and start looking at the current stuff in 1700 onwards up to modern times. And no modern current affairs as well. And then see how it all falls into place in regards to a larger object, objective, a larger agenda. Um, because there is clearly an agenda yes. going on. Well, there's that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. you know, I've, I've discussed that earlier with people like WGSN or the fashion forecasting. Someone, somewhere knows what's going on. Yeah, clearly. They're yeah, they're putting the colors of their plan in your mind, you know, years ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, they had the, they had a, the Davos group or whatever, like had a literally a 2019 plan pandemic that filled it out exactly what yeah. happened last year. So they like... Yeah. had a whole entire scenario that is a conference that you can watch online but like a year yeah. before it happened that happened yeah, yeah and if there's a group of people you know who are upstream that are managing it all for example you know we can see the evidence of wgsn doing what i've said right so you who owns them who owns those that own them you know so who's got the script who's yeah. writing the script how intellectual are they are they beyond human intellect you know, they're spinning a lot of plates. It is. It's a lot of plates spinning. Agreed. Yeah. A lot of different masks being worn. Right. Yeah. 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 But at the same time, overarchingly simple. Yeah. Overarchingly. Yeah. If you, yeah. Can, you can really boil it down to a pretty simple plot yeah. or a pretty agenda, but yeah. keep it going is a, a multi, multifaceted, you know, really, but really becomes easable or manageable when it's on that scale because it's so compartmentalized you know for example the, the employees at these fashion forecasting companies have no idea what they're doing yeah they're just going with the product so the, the guy in the top of the team will have told me because he had a meeting with the top of the director who had a meeting with another guy who was out with gucci yeah yeah and then you look at gucci and like why are they always in place why have they been there from the beginning why is hugo boss sponsoring formula one teams why have hugo got boss got um, Lewis Hamilton talking about Black and Lives Matter. Hugo Lava. Boss, like, why did Hugo Boss make those uniforms? uniforms. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, I know Lewis as well. I, I used to race model cars with Lewis, <laughs> and he lives in Welling Garden City, which isn't far from me. So he's not the kind of guy that you know that would. I don't know what's going on there. You know, well, but, maybe it's higher up. Maybe there's a level that we're not penetrating yet. It's a. I think when a, when you're getting you know 20, 30 million pound a year, you just do what you're told. Probably, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes I also feel like we're like Jafar has the Aladdin lamp, you know. Like I feel like there's something, uh, like, mm, maybe, maybe esoteric. I don't know. Maybe, like more magical. <laughs> like I don't know. Something's going on that's a little oh. bit different. Maybe it is their black magic fuckery. Um, creating yeah. egregores that are able to take control of like the thought collective, you know. Well, like... you know what? When we next speak, we should um, maybe have a chat about Joe Rogan's work on the DMT. That the is DMT good. Just psychedelics in general, guys. Yeah, the whole psychedelic, you know, stuff. We need to get into that just because of the fact yeah. that there is a reason why it's outlawed and why it's illegal, and yeah. there, there yeah. could be some good some good uh, insights to be made in that. Well, field. I mean, and like some of the insights I've had on psychedelics, um, I make it kind of, like it's all Maya. It's all, this is all an illusion in some sense. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. or, 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there oh. could be to the DMT elves and the little little guys trying to give you advice when you're on, on your trip and stuff that Joe says. Yeah. 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 So should we wrap up now anyway? Because yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. It's, it's been a few hours. Close. Okay. All right, guys. Well, this was a great oh. conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs>